Symphony Essary Nation. We are excited to get this season off with a bang. I think they're all taking tires. And on top of that, it's going to be even saucier. It's going to be an all-out shootout to the end. He's got a lot of sight on these guys. I can imagine you've got a bravery. He's getting this close to the diffuser. All you gotta do is win the race. You don't have to lead a whole bunch of laps. Oh, they're gonna be side by side going into the next corner. Oh, that's a big contact in the back of the field. Can't stay out there like this. He stayed in it! So we're off and away for SRA. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final round, the final week of SRA Season 10 here for Division 5 for the final time this season. I'm Andrew Wife, joined by Andrew Berg. Normally, we'd have Selena here in the booth with us, but she's feeling a little bit unwell. So I was going to buy out, bow out of this one, but we've got enough energy, I think, uh, to cover for all three of us if she were here, Andrew. So we're just bursting with energy here. It's the final round. There's a championship battle on the line. I can't wait. Championship battle on the line. We get to declare a champion tonight. I mean, that special doesn't happen very often, and we're not sure who it's going to be. It's still up in the air. Absolutely is. We'll take a look at that in a second, but first, let's get an overview here of the track that we're on tonight. Of course, Silverstone, legendary piece of circuit standing at 3.6 miles long with 18 turns, and each and every one of them is a challenge in its own right. Literally every single one. I mean that uh, in... in that way every uh, every single time you hear somebody say literally it's always some sort of exaggeration not this time every turn has its own challenge here at silverstone and of course with there being 18 of them it's going to be quite the contest for the drivers especially be looking out for people saving time through maggots and beckett's cops is going to be an immense challenge especially with the uh, variable fuel load there is going to be a mandatory tire change for tonight but you can't refuel so as the tires kind of uh, you know uh, change with their grip levels over time and then they have to go into the pits for some fuel you might get a little bit of a variation there but that's enough about the track let's talk about the drivers so austin red donovan colton that's what we're looking at now josh grush was a player in the championship he will not be racing i know we said that last week but i i do believe he will not be racing today so it's austin red versus donovan colton and coming off uh, Donovan Colton, coming off a pole position at Red Bull Ring, it looked like he was in control. He started the race out of position, and it it was a pe he was penalized immediately with a drive through with the drive through from there. He finished a season worst, fifteenth place. On the other hand, Austin Red uh, was third coming into Red Bull in this championship, chasing Colton by thirty six points. He did not have a good qualifying session by his standards. Started a season worst seventh, but when it mattered most in the race, he made the moves and finished second place for his fourth podium of the season. He's still ch chasing that first career SRA win. Uh, and then Josh Grush, currently third in the championship, he will not be racing, like we said already. Uh, so he will drop down the standing. Spiker in fourth, he needs a, a 15th place or better uh, to jump Josh Grush for third in the championship. Uh, he's already locked down the silver championship after a seventh at Red Bull Ring. Uh, Tyler Thompson, he's got a shot. He's got a shot at third, so he's got something to race for. He needs a ninth place or better, and obviously to beat Spiker. Yeah, it's crazy for Spiker to have that silver championship all the down there. Uh, it's a huge congratulations to him, although I did do my math wrong on the last one. I knew it was going to happen. I, I, every single time I mentioned it last week, uh, there is still a possibility that I could be jumped by Steven Music and Nathan Schaefer, but if you look at the points, realistically, all that Spiker has to do is score at all. Uh, during this race, and that should be uh, just about good. And then, of course, receiving music and Nathan Schaefer, they'd have to take uh, that P1 spot, 
uh, P1 or P2, I think. Actually, no, it has to be P1. They need more than 110 points to do it. So I don't think that's going to be happening tonight, especially, as you mentioned, when we have Austin Red and Donovan Colton so clearly fighting for those top two spots. 19 points separating them is surely not a lot. And at Silverstone, it can be very, very difficult to find your breaking points when you're following other cars around the track. Source, I absolutely destroyed half of the field in Monday night's practice race because I could not see uh, where it was that I needed to stop. But more stories going down the field. Uh, as we get to the end of the season here, Regalia Vita had a bit of a resurgence here in the uh, late part of the season. Had had very strong pace throughout. Rene Oki is also a notable driver as well, who kind of really shone in the middle of the uh, season with that win at Indianapolis, especially, uh, was absolutely insane for them. A couple other drivers as well that I, I kind of noticed. Stories from Ian Demler, Kent Van Sickle further down the list. As you can see there, Zip in 16th place and almost on the silver post. I'm just a couple of places outside has put up a quite the performance. Mert Mertz and finds themselves on to the first page here of the driver standings, which I have to give them major, major credit for. I've been talking about all season. But we'll take a look here at page two as well uh, with a couple of the drivers who have been a little bit lower down the field. Connie Yetzierski has been a driver that we've talked about plenty of times. Brett Vaughn uh, simultaneously. And, uh, you know, Andrew talking about Brett Vaughn in specific, a couple of races that they've missed, but they've certainly not been a lackluster source of action on track. Yeah, we didn't get to see uh, Brett Vaughn last week or at Spa, so I'm not sure of his if he's going to be here tonight. Uh, you did mention Yazerski had a great qualifying last week at Red Bull Ring, season best fifth. Uh, race did not go his way, but someone to look out for who's getting faster later on in the season, Connor Yazerski. Take a look at the team standings now as drivers are getting started on their outlaps here for qualifying. We got Corsa Spasatura for OBDA way up at the top with your soon-to-be ideally silver champion James Spiker and Tyler Thompson. They've had such consistent and strong performances throughout the season. Nobody could be surprised by that. But the battle for first is still on with Monaco's Gamblers and Double Edge Motorsports still both competing. We got Regali Vita and Steven Music against Eric Rutterham and Donovan Colton. The only person on that list that I would think like, ah, oh, yeah, they haven't really had uh, too many amazing finishes is, well, it's, it's, it's Eric Rutterham. He's been finishing more in the mid-pack, yeah. but... Those consistent points, they still do add up. And when you've got Donovan Colton on your team, one of the lead fighters for the Drivers' Championship overall here in Division 5, you got to be feel pretty confident about yourself. So keep an eye on how that continues. But drivers are starting to get out on their outlaps. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it on over to what we see on the screen. So Silverstone, that's what we're racing here today. Very high-speed track, very smooth high grip too so when you get those three things high speed smooth and high grip it offers opportunities to make some fantastic moves so expect times today we should be breaking two minutes i fully expect us to break the two minute barrier here in d5 um 59s will we see a 58 uh that would be one heck of a time but 59s i'm fully expecting that to be here uh, a pole position at silverstone in my opinion this track um, it doesn't get enough credit. It might be the best track in ACC uh, for side side by side racing with how wide it is, how fast it is. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on on no, I, what I, it offers. I completely agree with you. I, I mean, this yeah. this is an absolutely wonderful track for racing and for you know displaying your speed and consistency with the car really being able to speak with it especially as we watch some of these drivers go through maggots and beckets on their first flying laps and as you mentioned expecting to see some 159s but the track is boiling hot today well i guess i wouldn't necessarily say boiling hot not uh, like laguna seca last season but 35 degrees celsius is getting up into the warmer temperatures here for a normal race day so it's going to be very very challenging to keep your temp uh, your temperatures in the operating window for this qualifying session thankfully the track is starting out at optimum but you can see zip here going just a little bit wide on the exit of beckett's it's gonna be an invalid lap almost surely and a lot of time lost at that yeah uh zip uh, coming off a third at a Spa in the wet, 15th last week. Um, we, he's only raced half the season. He was promoted up, remember, uh, from Division 6 into Division 5 halfway through the season. He's shown some great pace. We, he's had uh, I mean, four top tens in his, excuse me, five races, not four. So four out of the five races he's raced in have been top ten. Uh, qualifying, I think there's some opportunity there to improve other than a great position at Spa. But Spiker, here it is, your silver championship leader. He's had a pole position, someone who's been very, very fast in qualifying 
for the Silver is James Spiker, and they're looking to lock down that Silver Championship. So they're making use of all of the curve possible on the inside there. Exit of uh, Luffia going through Woodcoal, but it's only a two minute 1.5, or excuse me, 0, 0.0 for Spiker, but still. I'm expecting to see some really, really low times in comparison. Aaron Kovacs actually will go to the top of the pile early on here with a two-minute flat, 0.2, uh, which, again, not necessarily a bad time, but I'm fully expecting those 159s, as you mentioned. Maybe even a stray 158. That was a nice little take there of maggots for Aaron Kovacs, trying to maximize those curbs. Watch for those cars, especially through this twisty section, to get all the way up on the green part of those curbs to really try to maximize their exit speed. So here we go, Raf Cab, uh, another one who's been in the mix. I think he's fifth or sixth in silvers. Um, he's going to be behind, obviously, Spiker, Music, Cowley, Schaefer, and Demler are other drivers I'm looking out for today. Uh, Calf's been in the mix, uh, obviously going to need to be faster here. Uh, but of the championship, uh, silver championship, it does look like Music is the fastest so far, second behind Kovac. So... Uh, Steven Music, someone to, who's racing for something here tonight, uh, currently second in the Silver Championship by one point, I believe. One point ahead of Cowley. Yeah, it's, cer it's certainly close. And I mean, the times are looking pretty close as well. You talk about Steven Music, only a uh, tenth, not even a tenth, half a tenth off of the current pole time there set by Aaron Kovacs. They're all improving, though. Uh, Nathan Schaefer about up 1.4 seconds. Rathcap was also in the same boat. We were on board with them for most of the lap as well. So it's going to be a lot of improvements here for those running in the uh, low to mid two minute and one times. Uh, I can't help but wonder if it's maybe a little bit of the track rubbering in. We'll take a look now with Cowley, who's improving by about six tenths here boy there's a lot of green these times are going to be dropping big here aren't they oh yeah again keep an eye out for when schaefer and that cab go across the line they're seventh and eighth right now but i feel like that's not going to hold again here through law field very very challenging corner to get right trying to carry as much speed as you can without getting any of that understeer get down on the power early and here comes cali down the line six tenths improvement looks like it's going to be good thomas ma i think just uh came is about to come across the line just a little bit behind this one, actually. So we'll get on board. This is about to be eight tenths for them. And Rathcab did move up into a seventh. It wasn't exactly the improvement they're looking for. With Thomas Ma, two minute point two six, and the pull time did advance from Schaefer up to a two minute point zero one five. We're getting real close, and I, I misspoke. I said it was Music who was in second, Schaefer who was in third. Music is in second. He's leading Schaefer by one point. Uh, in the silver standing. So it's Spiker, Music, then Schaefer. And Schaefer just needs basically to finish ahead of Music today to get second locked up. Uh, but Schaefer does look like he's improving. Now Now it's starting to get hard. The, the, the green on our screen, the improving times, I don't see as many. Music maybe. Uh, Kovac looks to be getting much faster, actually. He could be someone to look for. Maybe he's the first driver, Kovac, to break a two-minute? Let's get on board with him and see what happens here. Current time at two minute point two, but he's laying very, very good for an improvement. Looking nice and late just after the beginning of the curb there. It's a wonderful take at the apex, trying to take as much speed as you possibly can. There wasn't much of a maximization there, though, and I can't help but feel like that's going to be a little bit of the time lost, even though the McLaren's got some good downforce. It's not that good all the way down. I, I think they had six tenths lost in just that corner. That's quite a bit. They're still improving, though, and it doesn't look like they're going to have that 1 minute 59 in the bag unless they've got improvements to come here through Brooklyn's and Luffield. We'll just wait and see what happens here as they come up towards the line. Kovac, who has been uh, a reasonably solid driver, I believe, competing in Division 4 last season. And then here they come up to the line. Again, making as much use of the curve on the inside. And I don't think it's that improvement they're looking for, but still P2. So you got to respect that. Oh, yeah. This is definitely going to be Kovac's best qualifying position so far. He averages 19th across the whole field. So for Aaron Kovac to be this high up this early, that's a great sign. Schaefer still holding on. We haven't yet seen him 59, though. No, we, well, Thomas Ma actually just put one up on the board, and I believe this might have been one for Steven Music, but they invalidated on the exit of the last turn, and they returned to garage. They had time for another lap. Maybe they had no fuel, though. And that's going to be the end of qualifying for Music. Uh-oh, music. He's something. He's racing for something today. Second in the championship. Schaefer right behind him. And Schaefer is second in this silver so far. 
So not the start for Steven Music. This is looking good for Cali. Three and a half tenths up on a two minute point two seven. This could easily be a pull time if they find a little bit of corner. Stowe, very, very difficult corner to get right. Try to get down on power, even if you have to touch that curb a little bit on the inside. It looks like they're not going to quite get the power down that they wanted, but it's about even with their current personal best. And very, very challenging corners to get right. And you can see going a little bit wide at the apex there, trying to compensate by carrying a little bit more speed. And it looks like they're going to sack a little bit of that exit, but they're still roughly three tenths up on their previous time. If they've got more to save, Cali could still make a lap out of this. Cali might be our first 59. He's close. This is very, very close. This is definitely an improvement so far from Mike Cowley. His, his best qualifying position this season was also at spot in the wet. He was on the third row, qualified fifth. Uh, he's had two top 10 qualifying positions in the last three races. Someone getting faster here later on in the season. Mike Cowley. Oh, no. I think he's lost it. That delta's gone down. Dude, I think so I don't know if it's going to improve. Just a couple of mistakes for the last couple of corners. So we'll, we'll hop on board with Mike Eric. I'll keep an eye on that just in case. But I think Mike, Kyle, Mike Kelly might have to settle for P6 or maybe even a little bit lower as the 326 here of Mike Eric has moves on to that middle straight up about eight tenths on their time, looking to move into the mid two minute times. This is more like it. This is more like it for Mike Eric has. I like this. Uh, he's racing with his son, Matt Ariquez. So this is the father. I don't know if Matt is here. Uh, maybe I'll check back in on that later, but I don't see him here. But uh, father-son duo here, Mike Ariquez. Average qualifying position, 30th. This is good. About a second up good. on the board. And that's going to be a massive improvement. Ninth is their final resting spot. Maybe not as many positions as you would expect after a second of lap time being shaved off, but still a respectable finish. Yeah, you got to be happy about that. To only be six, seven tenths off pole here at Silver, uh, Thomas Maud did get a 59, 59, eight, two tenths ahead of Schaefer. Uh, so I believe that's going to do it for our Silvers. Now on track, Donovan Colton. And this is our championship leader. Excuse me, uh, second in the championship behind Austin Red. Austin Red, who's a couple of positions behind him. It's actually Regeli Vita, a previous race winner, who's leading the pack out, had a phenomenal drive at the Red Bull Ring. Even after taking an alternative strategy, managing to finish a couple of seconds ahead of P2. And I believe they're still on their outlaps. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but it is going to be Donovan Colton crossing the line second here, immediately after the 154 McLaren here. And I'm eager to see what they've got to bring to the table, but worth noting, there are only seven drivers in the gold division actually out on track today. Interesting. So there's a lot of points on offer here today. Uh, Regal Vitae in a hurry here to get out and set those first few laps. So this is going to be his first flyer. Again, he was our race winner last week at Red Bull Ring. He basically dominated the field if it wasn't for an, an interesting strategy call for him. He decided to take fuel when most you know drivers were out here taking one liter of fuel and he took actually a considerable amount i think it was something like 40 liters yeah. otherwise he would have won the race by 12 13 seconds so it made it cl closer than it probably should have been uh, but it worked <laughs> oddly yeah well if you can bring that kind of pace here today i'm sure austin red will be happy for somebody if somebody that's not austin red has to win this one i'm sure austin red would want it to be regale vitea because that means that colton isn't able to step away uh, by about 10 points in this one it's a very it's a very nerve-wracking race here for red and i can speak a little bit from experience here you know i've got some very very fast drivers behind me i'm leading the silver championship in division three but i definitely do not feel safe with my lead i've got something like 20 to 30 points under my belt you know red's only got it is just barely double digits is what it feels like. So as he's out on his hot laps right now, I can't help but feel there's a little bit of pressure underneath the hood of that Lamborghini alongside, you know, that incredibly powerful engine he's got going for him. Very, very strong on the brakes, this car. And I can't help but feel it's going to be rather powerful. I mean, there's so many very important braking zones on this track. Uh, when it comes to overtaking, I wonder if that's going to have an impact. Yeah, absolutely. The pressure's definitely ramped up, but... Who, who's in, oh, so we got Vitier in, in, in leading. So we have the first laps behind. I think Colton will get a lap from him too, right? Before we see red. 
I just want to make sure we get the right guys in order. I guess we'll see it here in our in a moment. We'll keep you updated. But here comes our first time for Regalia VTA. No problem. No problem. Pole right away. Cole nipping the third. 59-8. Thompson 50, came across. Yeah. 59-7 for, 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 for VTA? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Okay. It looks like Red ran an invalid lap. Rodriguez goes uh, into 13th with a two-minute point six. Uh, so some of the midfielders uh, for the Golds putting down some, I would assume, banker lap times. But yeah, for Kelly Vite moving up immediately onto provisional pole position. Donovan Colton not far behind, and neither is Tyler Thompson. I didn't see what Austin Red actually ran for their last lap. It was invalid. Rene Oki and Stefan Buckley join that little group with that. But it's already Donovan Colton who is improving roughly two tenths here as they go through Stowe. Like I said, very challenging courts. Quite easy to invalidate on the exit of that one as well. If you try to get that power down a little bit too aggressively, you can easily run wide. Austin Red. I mean, when, when the pressure's on, though, I mean, yes, his first lap did not go well, and right? He's only got five minutes left. He needs this lap. But when the pressure's been on in qualifying the season, he has delivered. No one's been faster. Average out, he's been the fastest. He's qualified on the front row five times. Sorry, in the first three rows, five times his worst qualifying position seven so i don't doubt austin red's gonna be able to put down a lap here what? uh although to watch what do you see regalia Vite, look at this delta Whoa. what One is that second up on the pole time that can't right be now right. donovan colton is running five tenths up on his time which already feels like it's gonna be a screamer but regalia Vite, right right now has a purple sector one does not have the purple sector two but i feel like it's going to change as this lap comes across the line unless they invalidate this one somehow this has been an absolute screamer of a lap for the current p1 driver donovan colton is still improving a little bit but not nearly uh, to this degree again using all the curve as he possibly can in and through woodcomb that's a 158.68 uh -oh. time whoa colton. whoa that's a time Colton's so Colton goes slower. front row. <laughs> wow, a 58-6. There's Austin Red. Okay, so yep. he's got that 59-6. It's good. It's not fast enough, but he's right behind Colton. If he's not going to be on the front row, I'm okay with Austin Red being on the second row. Uh, but he can't go any further back. Austin Red has to be on the second row or better. Yeah. And I'm looking down the timing sheet already. It looks like Tyler Thompson, he's one of the biggest gainers right now on the current lap. It looks like Rodriguez is actually too far behind. Ex ex excuse me, not too far behind on their lap as well. He's also improving, so they might have a bit of a say. They're improving about four tenths on a two minute point six, which might promote them presently up towards the top of where some of the silver drivers finished. Watching again through Stokor, using all that curb on the inside, getting down the power early. Mercedes looking quite, quite balanced through that one, I might add. Very, very difficult chicane here and that's a lot of speed carried i don't know how in the world rodriguez is getting this rotation of the car without throwing the back out but yeah they are so keep an eye on this lap i have a feeling they're going to move up the order quite a bit yeah rodriguez coming off an eighth position qualifying uh a season best uh, at red bull ring uh needs this improvement here it's it's a big improvement he's up six tenths so this is going to be big for him other drivers to watch tyler thompson um Tyler, you know, fourth last week at Red Bull Ring. You know, D7 champion last season. Uh, and, and if it wasn't, if he showed up more around this season, he, he would be higher up. Yeah. Well, it's, it certainly feels like that. Of course, the Spazzatura, you know, you still take the teams, the team championship, though. And if we your teammate about to take a silver championship, they lost a lot of time, though, to Tyler Thompson on the exit of that corner, and they're not going to improve this lap. And I have one or two more chances. Rodriguez comes across the line. This is almost a solid second's worth of improvement. That's going to catapult them up, I think, just about into the top five, if my maths are doing correctly. And that will be a P4 second row for Roger Rodriguez. Wow, that's a massive result. Roger Rodriguez, he's coming off to a great week last week at Red Bull Ring, and he's following up here at Silverstone. Tell the story to check. Uh, I mean, we're on Stefan Buckley right now, but it's Colton and Red. Unchanged Colton front row, Red second row, but Red is improving. And so is Regali Vita. It looks like Stefan Buckley had a little bit of time on the table, but might have lost it uh, through the middle straight there, perhaps with a little bit of exit speed. So we'll take on board here with Austin Red. 
through Stowe, maybe not maximizing the track as much as they could there on the inside. I mean, right now you're on the second row, right next to your championship rival, the only person who could realistically take you out at this point with the absence of Josh Grush. So they should be pleased with that. They are up roughly four tenths on their time. And Colton's not improving. Colton's lap is invalid. So can Red push down Colton one row? Colton still Make might Red have... become the chaser. Colton still might have one on the table. If he lets the tires cool, this is this is something especially uh, to consider because if Donovan Colton kind of takes it a little bit easy uh, at the end of their lap, they might be allowed to let the tires cool and then run one more. They should have enough time on the table in order to do so. Regalia Vita is improving, by the way, only very slightly, but improvements are on the table. Thompson is also in the green on their Delta. It's not by a whole lot, but the whole story right now is for Austin Red. If they can out-qualify Donovan Colton, that position is going to be so important going to cops and especially Magnus and Beck. It's very, very challenging to go too wide there again I, I i gave it a shot i really did give it my best yesterday during the practice race and it did not work out it's a clean apex taking all that green curve trying to carry as much speed as they can here through luffield and getting down on the power as early as they can hopefully getting that rotation without spinning up the wheels it is going to be donovan Colton with no more laps available it's going to be three tenths improvement here for austin red but i don't think it's going to be enough and i think p2 is safe for donovan Colton. it wasn't a large margin uh but austin Austin Red behind Colton in P3. Wow, that was close. Off by just less than two tenths. I think the only car we have left on track. Uh, Rene Aoki, pole at Indy. We got David Herrera. He's up. Um, so I think we're on with Aoki now. Uh, but Colton will start the race on front row. Your championship, uh, you know, second in the championship. Your championship leader, Austin Red, starting right behind him. Vitier, he's got an untouchable 58.5. Yeah. Clear and far away the fastest driver on track. This is going to be Aoki coming down the old start finish. Yeah, through Abby. Fast right-hander. Lots of commitment through that one as well. Be phenomenally difficult to get that one right. I, I mentioned it when we were looking at the track map. This is a track where almost every single corner is going to tax you as a driver. It's going to test you and your ability to keep the car under control while still maximizing the limits of the track. We did see David Herrera out, but they they had an invalidation earlier on. So it's going to be up to Aoki and their somewhat limited improvement so far. They're up about two tenths. If they can find a little bit more time, they could move up many, many positions. They're in 15th. It's only about four tenths from their time up to P7 right now. And it looks like they might have saved a little bit, but that's well wide in towards Luffield. And that's almost all of their time lost. They need a miracle exit here in order to pull it back. And I just don't see it happening. It goes into the red. And Rene Aoki will start in P15 here for the final race of the season. It was a good effort. They couldn't quite make it happen, but Regali Vitia, the pull time here is just ludicrous. Yeah, Regali Vitia, your go setups, pole position with a 58 and clearing away the fastest here in Division 5. If I could put up a 58 tomorrow in D2, I'm happy. Uh, just go to, he's someone who's come on extremely strong. If we saw this kind of pace, earlier in the season he would be leading this championship that's untouchable pace it really does uh, feel like of ETA. I, I mean you mentioned like even in division two that would be a pretty solid time of 158.5 in these conditions i mean you can talk about all you want maybe one car is better than the other you know the mclaren 720 uh, s evo is yeah okay it's reasonably strong in in general in the balance of performance we got people behind the scenes who are in charge of making sure that that no car stands out so you can't really tack it up to that it's all about the driver and it's very very clear that the one sitting on pole today is very talented and and or had put in a heck of a lot of practice i'd care to say uh that it's definitely a little bit of both but well i mean hey if he didn't put in a lot of practice all all the more power to him that's some insane raw pace right there as we look towards getting the session started here for the actual race i really don't know what to expect it's gonna be a, a spicy start that's for sure with vts starting on pole of course you know i expect that mclaren maybe to pull away a little bit but with the aston martin on the outside leading up into cups it's kind of a little bit challenging uh, to know how exactly things are going to turn out there
Yeah, so drivers to watch here right at the start. Donovan Colton on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, he's in that Aston Martin in that baby blue colored Aston Martin on the front row. And then that pink Lamborghini in the uh, Rexy-inspired AO Racing Lamborghini. He's behind uh, uh, Vitier on the second row. There you get a great shot of his livery. So watch these two drivers, Aston Martin, Lamborghini, Colton versus red for the d5 championship but again your go setups fastest uh position or fastest time here in qualifying the go setups pole position regalia vta go setups premium esports setups for everyone use our affiliate link on discord and take your drive to the next level there's your field it's a little bit smaller than i was expecting 22 drivers uh, but that just only means there's more points available for everyone else very true. And I mean, talking about uh, for uh, for James Spiker in specific, you know, even if you finish all the way down to the bottom of the field, as long as you finish, you've got the Silver Championship all backed up. So as they get started now on the formation lap, you can see uh, that pull away. It's the 154 for Sky Tempesta Racing. As you mentioned, if, if Regele brought this kind of pace earlier on in the season, Lord knows where we'd be with the championship. You know, he's sitting in seventh right now overall, but uh, I've got half a mind to say that it would have been a comfortable candidate for your first place in the overall. His first pole position of the season prior to this, his best position qualifying was sixth place, uh, was the Montreal Canadian coming off a win. So confidence is really high to follow up with a pole position. Boy, he's got to be happy about that. We saw him last week. He was, um, that car was, he was, if you recall, he was squirming that car around, getting those tires nice and hot. I don't know if he needs to do that today. Track temp, <laughs> optimum, and 30. Uh, but he'll be someone fun to watch. Another driver I'm looking to watch today is Tyler Thompson. Uh, he has a shot at third place now. He needs a ninth place uh, finish or better to finish ahead of... Um, uh, Josh Grush. Excuse me. Yes, Josh Grush. So, But Tyler Thompson does have a shot here at getting third in the championship. So watch him versus James Spiker. Spiker's down in ninth. So Tyler Thompson, I'm watching him. He needs to finish ahead of Spiker by about 19 points. So very possible. That's about seven to nine positions. So watch Thompson, watch Spiker. We'll, we'll recap that later on in the race. Uh, but again, your head story here. Got to watch out. It's Colton versus red and we'll keep you guys updated on points throughout the rest of the race no picture in picture today I, i've been dealing with some difficulties oh, yeah. we may get that up later on in the race so if you're looking for that um sorry we don't have that for you here tonight but we'll, we'll keep trying hey well we've done our best all season anyway and we'll continue to do so so we hope that you guys uh are, are all right with that for tonight Something else I'm looking forward to, though. I mean, we're talking about stories. It's been stories all throughout. Thomas Ma qualifying up here in P5. He was one of the promotees uh, from Division 6 this season early on. Uh, alongside Roger Rodriguez, who, as you mentioned, their previous best qualifying was uh, in the last race, I believe, at P8. So now, starting on the second row for Rodriguez, showing a massive improvement in overall pace. And you can't really be angry with that. Although, here's something to note. Talking about Thompson and Spiker, uh, talking strategy... Although they may have the team championship pretty well backed up, although Spiker might have the silver championship pretty well backed up, you still want to, you, you'd not be a racing driver, right? You know, you'd not be a racing driver if you didn't really commit for the race. So it begs the question what their strategy is going to be, because they've always been early pitters, you know, splash and dash race strategy. They are pitting lap one, they're getting some clean air, and they're just, they're just basically playing qualifying lap simulator. Uh, but especially Ideally, on this track. Though. Yeah, ideally, the strategy here is with these temperatures and Silverstone being such a high commitment track. What do we mean by high commitment? You're entering turns in with a lot of speed. There's fourth, there's fifth uh, gear turns here. Uh, very, very fast kinks. So what's that? what does that mean? Tire temps are going to be important. You, you might even get some graining here, some light graining, some even me, uh, medium graining. So ideally, you want to pit so you have maximum tire uh, performance so I would pit in the middle of the race pitting early I don't know about that I think that would be risky I wouldn't want to put that much stress on those tires for a full 60 minutes but here we go our curtain will close tonight uh, but before we've done that we've driven 713 miles so far this season we have 60 more minutes to go d5 what do you got for us absolutely ludicrous 
They're double filed down towards the line. It's Regalia Vita leading from Donovan Colton, leading from Austin Red. And again, watch the position two and three cars. They're the ones fighting for the championship lead, and it's the last round. You have exactly one shot to take it all for yourself, and it ends here at Silverstone. They prepare. The lights are on as they cross the start-finish line, and we're just about ready to go racing for the very last round in Division 5. Regalia Vita leading Yet again, in towards Cops Corner, and the lights are green. Austin Red starting from very far back here, but looks like they got a decent jump on the Aston Martin in front through Cops Corner. It looks like they're just about going to make it. Thomas Ball on the inside of Roger Rodriguez can't make anything happen, and they're too wide further down the field. Rath Cab looking to get a little bit of motion as well, but they can't quite get there. Donovan Colton leads from Austin Red, and Raquel Vitia stays out in front in that Sky Tempesta McLaren. Very nicely done. Great jump from Regala VTA and Colton. Austin Red, not so much. Caught sleeping a little bit. So he's going to want to get up behind that draft. He looked like he's getting attacked from Rodriguez when he should be the, doing the attacking. Here it is, Rodriguez. Potentially looking up the inside towards Stowe, but probably thinking better from that one. And they will go through that corner without much incident. Further back in the field, we do see one of them uh, getting a little bit wide there. I believe that was Tyler Thompson. And now Nathan Schaefer might have a potential run in towards the breaking zone. But it looks like they're going to lay back on that one. Steven Music up towards the inside. Very, very close to the diffuser of the 906. And the 173 is trying to move up here as well. But no move will be done. I believe Ian Demler taken by Mike Cowley, though, only a moment ago. A driver with a lot of pace, as we saw in the qualifying session. Yeah, Demler's been strong so far late in the season. Music needs to get working up this order, and he needs to be doing it soon. He does not want to be further down where he is currently sitting in 14th. Music is currently second in the Silver Championship. He needs to pass and finish ahead of Schaefer and Cowley and Demler, and all of them are in front of him. So not a good start for Steven Music. See Donovan Colton's already closed up to the back of Regalia Vita. I don't know how Regalia has had such strong pace, but here comes the Aston down the straight. He's not going to have a chance to make the move, uh, but it takes a lot more of that curve on the inside, so there could be potential here for Donovan Colton. The race win would be absolutely huge, and for Regele Vitea to be in between Austin Red and a position two finish, that would be absolutely optimum for Donovan Colton, so he has to perform to the best of his ability here. James Spiker is up behind Nathan Schaefer at present. Roger Rodriguez again behind Austin Red, maybe giving a little bit of early breaks there for Cops Corner. You don't want to get into an incident in this fast right-hander. Yeah, here comes that tricky spot. It's tricky every single time. This is the Maggots and Beckett's complex. You're entering in with a lot of speed. You're coming in fifth gear, dropping down fourth, then to third, but it's this quick left, right, right. Ooh, and, and it just tests the tune a little bit. Oh, we got Cowley. Is that Cowley off? That, that was Cowley. Cowley. Yeah. I should save it, though. I don't know how, but that's going to be a spot for Ian Demler, who is sniffing up the behind there of that car in front. And uh, well held for both those drivers, realistically speaking. Thomas Ma looking dangerous here early on. Indeed. Um, hasn't lost touch with Rodriguez in red. Again, Thomas Ma promoted up. He was a D6 driver earlier on this season, and he's hanging with the leaders here in D5. Very impressive. I would say Zip, of the two drivers who were promoted, Zip and Ma, Zip's been far more impressive than Thomas Ma, but this kind of pace, uh, Ma's got to be happy with here in fifth place. Oh, surely. And I mean, talking about the, mo the more impressive of the promoted drivers, that's not to say that Thomas Ma hasn't looked impressive in the past, specifically at Indianapolis, moved to very, very many positions after uh, uh, sustaining a pit lane start in that race. So certainly a lot of potential for that driver. It looks like they might have an opportunity here. Rodriguez has gone a little bit wide into the first of those two corners. The slow speed, the Audi looking to make the move here on the straight through the middle. And the 305 got a little bit more of that inside line, so it's going to have to be an aggressive braking move here for Thomas Bond. I just don't see that one happening from that far back, so that looks like it's going to be the end of the story for now. Stefan Buckley in the back looks like they might have gone just a little bit wide, and now they've got a McLaren up the inside. It's Steven Music trying to make a move, and it looks like it'll just about be done. Ooh! Ooh, that, that's that Cowley again? It was Cowley. Completely sideways there. A bad lap from Mike Cowley. I can't claim to know what exactly went on with that one. But uh, we're going to leave that one to the imagination for now. There's still more action to be had. Austin Red has kind of lost the back of the train in front, but does have a little bit of a gap behind. Donovan Colton, though, sticking on board with Regal Vita. Uh, again, far and away, the fastest driver has the purple lap so far. Not by a whole, whole lot. And it looks like they might actually just run a little bit wide there. 
onto the hangar straight, but they've got that gap and a little bit of breathing room yet. So I will look to get you uh, standings here again. So Austin Red leads Donovan Colton by 19 championship points, okay? So if they finish where they are now, Austin Red still wins this championship, so he doesn't have to pass Donovan Colton, but he's got to maintain that position, maintain that gap. I mean, I don't know that these guys are thinking about that right now, right? Doing math in their head. I hopefully not. Uh, but just to keep you an idea, Red would be leading this championship and win this championship should they finish in the order they are now. You got Cowley trying to fight on the inside of Aoki. Really having to go out. It looks like this battle. Oh, that's a beautiful defense there by Cowley. It was Aoki up the inside of Stowe off the end of the hangar straight. But now they're under attack from behind. That looked like it was going to be a high percentage move, but now Zip is immediately up in their diffuser. Unfortunately, it's very, very challenging to follow through that corner. And Aoki, who looks like they've been running a bit of a low downforce setup for a majority of the season, had a bit of a moment there. They're able to gather that one up and maintain a little bit of their track position again. Lots of drivers seem like they're not quite getting the exit out of Village that they would like. And allowed Zip to close off just a tiny little bit, but it's nothing significant. So we'll hop on board. I think but this, this is a really large train, though. I'm going to go ahead and take the wing cam here for Ian Demel. You can see just how many cars are behind this train, all of them within about a second of each other. It's, it's, in fact, it's so large, you can hardly even see it on the main screen there. So I'll get back here. It goes all the way from roughly P10 to about P20, a one-second gap or less between every single car. Still plenty of time. Reminder, guys, we have a pit stop to make today. As the special rules, they will be taking tires today. So expect 30 seconds in addition uh, to a normal pit stop time. So, you know, if you're, if you're caught in traffic, I still think it's too early. I, I, pitting now leaves too much time. There can be graining. There can be tire wear with these temperatures. And like I mentioned earlier, that high commitment type track where you get this high speed. Uh, but maybe someone dips in early if these gaps start to really shrink or at least stay in this compressed format with that we're in right now cowley though coming off a bad lap he's still willing to go toe to toe with kovac yeah it's kovac on the outside and cowley's been here before on the receiving end the first go around and through stone you can see aoki still wants a part of this battle and the 296 is not going to be able to get that traction against Aaron kovac and aoki might be thinking about something in fact zip's getting into it kovac goes deep well deep Kelly will be glad to see that one, but Rene Oki still not done with this. It looks like it's tire to tire in towards the apex. And Kelly does have to leave a little bit of space. They run it wide even to keep their speed up. And now Zip is immediately in this conversation. Aoki, I think, peeking out to try to spot their braking marker a little bit better so they can stay up close to the wing of that Ferrari ahead. Yeah, it looks like Aoki has a little bit of trouble. He had trouble with that turn last time around. But those high speeds, you see that GTR just get a little loose there on the rear. And again, that line a little bit narrow from the GTR, and Zip is going to see if they can have a little bit of a go at it. I love this posture from Zip. Again, they can't quite get that move done, but they're thinking about it. They're making those aggressive stances, and surely it's making Aoki think. I mean, an Aoki who has been battling reasonably well so far, both offensively and defensively, but it really hasn't had a whole, whole lot of success. Like I said, this track makes for some excellent racing, but doesn't necessarily make it easy. Yeah, I think the driver to watch here of these three is probably Zip. Currently, he, he's agree. the car on screen right now. Of the last five races, four of them have been top tens. So the fastest driver over the course of the season we've seen, Zip being promoted from D6 into D5, no problem. I mean, today, Ma's the star of the two promotees, but Zip looking to start the season, you know. If he can make some passes, right, doesn't have to be for the championship. He's not a player, uh, but something to build on uh, zip good results in the last five races yeah, you can see of course Ma, you're just talking about still in that audi very challenging to get a hold of we saw that really come to fruition at indianapolis when they did have a bit of a moment like i said it was a phenomenal drive in terms of pace from Ma in indianapolis but they did have a couple of moments here or there that caused them some issues i see that the gap is quite low here aoki's gone deep in stow and zip is going to try for a bit of the run here but that gtr very very powerful in a straight line and it's a short straight down to the braking zone but a straight nonetheless looks like they will be overpowered in that regard but i see david herrera further off the field also trying to make a move so as we see this come to a bit of a close herrera just three tenths behind nathan schaefer in front who as you mentioned is very much a championship competitor uh trying to get onto the podium for the silvers 
Yeah, Nathan Schaefer third in this championship. Uh, all he has to do is finish in front of Steven Music. So far, that job's done, and he will take second in the Silver Championship. So Schaefer is something definitely to drive for. He's competing not only against Music, currently sitting in 12th. Uh, also look out for Cowley. Cowley's struggling a little bit early on. Uh, not sure exactly. He's in 15th. And then Demler, he's in further down uh, in 10th. So Schaefer would get second. Yo, this is Cab. Oh, it's deep. That's hard. That's a Cab on Demler. Oh, yeah. That's Ian Demler across the track in a huge contact. Oh. And for Steven Music as well. And... That is unfortunate. I think Raf Cab might have gone a little bit deep on the brakes there. You know, again, we're not here to make rulings for the stewards, but it surely looks like the red and black McLaren of Ian Demler got run out of road there on that exit. So I think Raf Cab uh, might be at fault for that one. We'll just uh, leave that one to the stewards. And for right now, the best thing that they can do is keep running their race and see what they can do uh, to make up some positions. But for a couple of drivers, that's really a phenomenally bad outcome. That was some close racing there. Stefan Buckley overtaken there by Roger Rodriguez. But you can see both of them start to lose a little bit of control. It is challenging to go through Maggots and Beckett's uh, in such a way. Uh, but it seems like they're going to keep their cars pointing the straight way. The Mercedes will come out ahead, although they've both got a little bit of a speed deficit now moving through there. But I can't help but wonder if some of the cars behind are going to look for an easy move up the field. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure I like that from... Uh... Buckley, I mean, yeah, you go off track, I get that, but he kept the steering wheel straight, but he didn't come out and lose too much time. He's got to be careful about doing that. So Zip and Steven Music going at it, and Steven Music, who would very much like to recover after that contact, surely. But I think... Yeah, Nathan Schaefer has got no idea what just happened behind him with, <laughs> yeah. with uh, Demler and Music. Uh, getting into that wreck. Uh, so Nathan Schaefer's loving this. He probably has no idea unless he's looking at his HUD. Let's get a little bit close as well. I think Eric Rudder and Mike Cowley and Stefan Buckley all really became uh, a bit of a close group of three. And oh, that's a late move on the inside for Mike Cowley. The 296 Ferrari, though, finds a space inside of Eric Rutterham. In towards the middle straight, has the apex, and is have, gonna have the extra speed as well. They have to take a bit of a defensive shape here immediately. They know that they're going to come under attack if that Aston tries to go up the inside. The 292 is going to stay out towards the racing line, though, and it's not going to be a late lunge either. What a move from Mike Cowley. That was insanely good. A little tussle there between Cowley and Buckley. That was a, I mean, uh, Rudderham, that was a good move. Wow, that was high level. Just chopped him off, right? And there's different lines through that little complex. Uh, but uh, Cowley really ripping that car uh, and taking that spot. Very impressive. I don't think there's any other way to say it. It might have a bit of a run. Oh, that's a car well wide. Who's that? That's Nathan Schaefer losing a lot of positions behind, as you see, Zip. Go through alongside Roger Rodriguez, Stefan Buckley, Mike Galli, Eric Rutter, and Rene Oki. They all gain a position due to that off there from Nathan Schaefer. I'm unsure what happened there, but it looked like a normal cops moment, if I have to be honest with you. So that's going to be a bit Ooh. of a... It's going to be put a that's bit a, of a hurt on That's a big the mistake. Race. Yeah, where's that put Schaefer? Where's he going to drop down now? All the way down into 16th at present. So where's music? M music gets into a wreck with Demler. Now Music's leading this, uh, going to get second in the championship in Selvers. Music's three three positions ahead. Kevin has actually qu got quite the run here on Zip. You can see on the main screen, and it doesn't look like there's going to be much space to go up on the outside there. So well held uh, by Zip, who's had a mostly defensive race in terms of going wheel to wheel, but it certainly seems like it has been a relative success so far. I see David Herrera is in the pits presently. He's going to be the first of our pitters. Thankfully, you can see all of the name tags over there on the left and identify when exactly it is that they're going in. Mike Cowley outside here of, that's going to be Stefan Buckley. It did not stick. Maybe look at the inside again, trying to repeat the move. They pull on Eric Rutter in last lap. And now I think the GTR in front is surely thinking about Mike Cowley behind. This is, this is a driver who wants to move up this race. Yeah, Mike Cowley He's had an interesting race. I mean, had a poor lap early on. I think he had two mistakes. He was the second lap of the race. So he can catch Schaefer. He can catch Music. He can take second in this uh, Silver Championship. So now it's Cowley in the driver's seat. Yeah, Donovan Colton, I saw the gap. 
to Regalia Vita. He's been a little bit stagnant underneath the second for the most part, though, during this race. He was able to catch a little bit on the last lap, was quicker by one and a half tenths than the car ahead. Well into the slipstream now. But that purple lap still does belong to the race leader, Regalia Vita. I think I just saw a move further back in the field. Eric Rutterim being taken by Rene Oki, and it was Steven Music who both got through. It must have been something through the exit of cops. I wish I could go back and check that one, but uh, my race my uh, race controls replay function has been uh, busted most of the season. I really don't want to risk it now. But we do see Ian Demler looking to move up. There's not much room on the inside, but there is room indeed in towards Stowe. What a brave move for an Ian Demler, and he gets it done. What a what an attack. I don't even know what to say. So. Colton and Red, just to check on the championship, if you're joining us late, Red does lead this, lead this championship. As they stand now, Austin Red has 601 points. Colton, 590, so a gap of 11. Colton does need to get around Regala Vitae and win this race if Austin Red's going to finish in third. And not only does he need to do that, he needs to finish in front of him and get the fastest lap of the race. He needs 11 points. If he finishes, if he wins this race and Red gets third, that's still not enough. So he needs to get around and get fast, does Donovan Colton. He will not win this championship unless he does both. You can see Colton right here. Oh, they're both really maximizing the track. I think Zip just got overtaken by, uh, or excuse me, it was Eric Rutterham who lost the position uh, to Zip only a moment ago. But I want to get back on with the leaders immediately because you could tell Rick L.A. is under a lot of pressure here from Donovan Colton. And as you mentioned, this is a driver who has everything to lose in this race. He needs to be as aggressive as he possibly can, pushing at all hours, at all times of this race. And the pit strategy, who knows? If Regalia Vitea just has a bit of a slow stop, or if Donovan Goldman has an especially fast stop, uh, that could just about do it. And as you mentioned, you do need the fastest lap as well, but you're currently sitting at a two minute point four two two against Regalia Vitea, who ran a two minute point three nine two. And with fuel burn and new tires later on in the race, there is no telling where this could go. Yeah, and, and, and if Colton does do both, right? Assuming Red finishes third, of course, right? That all that changes everything if Red moves down one spot. But if Colton does get around, okay? And then say he sets the fastest lap. He only ties for the championship. I don't even know what the tiebreaker is. I think it's finishing positions. I'll check on that. But unless that happens, I'm not going to bother. But <laughs> he basically needs to get ahead of Regala VTA and get the fastest lap. So, so far, Austin Red currently in third. He is winning this championship as they sit right now. Oh, Kovac Aaron Kovac. Again. That's not the move you want to see there for Kovacs. Big spin, exit of Stowe. Lost that position to Rodericks. Mike Cowley is still going after it. I'm watching this Delta for Mike Cowley, and I'm watching this Delta for Donovan Golden. This looks like it could potentially be the move. On the back straight, has way more speed than the McLaren in front. Donovan Golden goes up the inside for the race lead, and Regali Vitae is going to drive for the switchback the apex here from the Aston Martin, but it's going to be the corner for Luffield for Donovan Colton. Move just about done, but he has to be firmer on the power here, leading in towards Cop's corner now. And Donovan Colton has got the race lead. Full attack mode here from Donovan Colton into the lead. Now, can he start setting laps? Regale Vite is not going to give this up. He won Red Bull Ring last week. He was on pole to start this race. He's got something to fight for here, too. Pride. And here they go, Maggots and Beckets. He's Regalia Vitae going to hold this one. Tries for the outside line, but Donovan Colton's able to chop it off. And he keeps that front running. And he takes a lot of the grass here. It doesn't look like that Aston handled it necessarily too well. It's going to have to sacrifice a lot of speed, but it's all about the exit here. Onto the hangar straight, and it looks like Regalia Vitae has got the advantage in this regard. Moreover, the slipstream is available, but you can see the Aston pulling away in that straight. The McLaren just doesn't have the power. And will this be the end of the battle? It could be a good take of Stowe for Regalia. It's a little bit of a slight maybe gets that power down still and trying to make this a battle you can see donovan colton leads with a bit of a line towards the inside and i think he's going to hold on to it for now but if this battle continues austin red is getting into the mix here yeah this little tussle between these two is only helping out austin red but again i don't know if austin red knows this you just can't 
come up with the possibilities and, and, and know about the championship standings and do that math in his head. All he knows is Donovan Colton's now in the lead of this race, and Donovan Colton is his rival in this championship. Yeah, and there's more action going on down the field. You can see there was a very, very small gap between Red Aoki and Zip, but I really want to keep my eye on this as Donovan Colton goes a little bit wide in the middle sector. But will have that traction and power down onto the straight where he made the move on the last lap. And for Regele, this is the last thing that you want to see. But now the question remains, will Donovan Colton be able to start putting down laps or will that pressure from behind continue to mount? You can see the McLaren going a little bit wide and Austin Red is going to capitalize, getting a little bit of a better line there. And through Luffield, that Lamborghini is looking like it's starting to catch up a little bit to Regele. Uh, have you made consideration, what if Austin Red moves up into second place here? I is it Donovan Colton who needs to finish first and with the fastest lap and to have Austin Red finish in third in order to win? No, Austin Red gets second place. He wins this championship. So there's no doubt about it. Even if they finish as the way they are right now, with Regele getting the fastest lap of the race, Austin Red still wins this championship as they sit right now. It's still Austin Red in control. He doesn't know that, though. I have to imagine he doesn't know that. There's just no way, unless someone's telling him in his ear and helping him out right now, all he knows is his le rival is leading the race. That much is true. Well, all you can do is your best. Hopefully Austin Red is putting up his best. Like I said, I feel like there's, there's more going on down the field, but I really don't want to look at that right now. We had two more pitters. It was Steven Music and Aaron Kovach. Not necessarily surprised to see that. With 39 minutes left in this race, the tires might be going on a little bit early, but there is going to be blue flag traffic coming up. That's Aaron Kovach immediately in front of current race leader Donovan Colton. Uh, there was an invalid lap. Colton actually went wide on cops, which I can only assume was a track cut warning. We can't say for sure. Here's Austin Red now. Regale Vitea probably a little bit demoralized from losing the race lead on merit from Donovan Colton. Oh, that's a big drift there from Regale Vitea. But they keep that car to control. The downforce from the McLaren coming in clutch. Austin Red might be looking for the move up the inside here, but thinks better of it. Maybe just trying to keep it clean and consistent for now. I, I mean, after all, if somebody gets a little bit of a shunt from another driver, that's going to sure uh, mix things up after the fact. I mean, maybe these tires are just starting to show their first signs there, but Regale clearly pushing that McLaren for everything it's got. Aaron, please, please get out of the way. <laughs> I get blue flags and, and you want to fight. Uh, I've been blapped before. It's not fun, but this is the final round, man. <laughs> we'll see. Aaron Kovac, gap to Colton behind is still 1.4, so they have no obligation. They have no blue flag just yet, but I am almost sure that uh, this is a driver who's going to be very, very aware of that battle coming up behind. And, ooh, that looks like a bit of a drift for Aaron Kovac as well. Uh, so that gap most likely going to come down as the leaders are coming up on this one. And this is about as close as we could possibly ask for. I mean, Division 5 has been an entertaining one all throughout the season. But with Regale Vita and Donovan Colton and Austin Red all giving us just about the best action that we could possibly hope for in the final round. This is exactly what we were hoping for. Regali Vitao, that's a huge run wow. onto the hangar straight. Colton got a little bit shaky there on the exit. And this looks like he's trying to take as defensive a line as he possibly can in towards Stone. Regali Vitao is going to swing out to the outside, but there's almost no chance that he makes that move happen. Austin Red, though, again, the big one to benefit from all of this. Is they both have to compromise their know. line. Seems like he's dropping off a little bit here on this lap. Oh, Regale really deep there. Unless he's taken a different line. We've seen that before. Yeah. It looks like it's going to stay as they are for now. Zip has been chasing down the back of Rene Oki for a little bit. Like I said, you know, there's action going, going on further down the field, but I'm really trying to keep on uh, with the fight for the top three spots right about now. Austin Red, that's a huge loss of time uh, through that fast right-hander. That's Abby. But uh, he's still going to be kind, kind of, you know, a little bit distant-related. Distant related to this fight, but definitely still in it. Regalia Vitae, I should add, still holds on to the fastest lap of the race, but I'm sure that once that fuel burn and those fresh tires go on the car, it's going to really, really shake things up, as we talked about earlier. I'm going to see if I can get my picture-in-picture uh, -picture working again, so if you want to give me a moment. Mm -hmm. Donovan Colton's got uh, a bell last so so. Just before I do so, to recap the audience here, Donovan Colton as they stand right now, would have 600 championship points. Austin Red, 601. Ludicrous stuff.
We'll just have to wait and see. The last lap at 201.8 for Donovan Colton compared to his best 2 minute 0.4 to Regalia Vita out 2 minute 1.585 versus their purple lap of a 2 minute 0.392. Actually, excuse me, the purple has been taken by Steven Music after the fresh tires went off on almost surely at 2 minutes 0 0.390. So kind of giving you an idea of what you could potentially expect uh, four times to come down. Regale Vita uh, once again out of Magnets and Beckett's has the run on the Aston Martin in front. But that Aston, the slipstream is not good enough for the McLaren. It simply cannot out drag the V8 of that Aston Martin. And towards Stowe, he's going to have to wait on this one again unless he opts for the move up the inside. Once again, this chicane, you can see a lot of action through here is going to try to opt uh, for a bit of a better exit in towards Abbey. I don't think it's really going to come to fruition exactly for Regale Vita. We'll have to drop back once again. Uh, I am going to be able to get PIP working for us here, folks. It does look so. Stand by. But Steven Music, did I see that? Getting the... Track racer, fastest lap of the race. This would be his first of the season. Indeed. Hey, I, my awesome red be chuffed for that one. <laughs> Tell you that for free. Looking at uh, Stefan Buckley and Eric Rudderham, both into the pits now. And worth noting again, you know, on top of the fact that Donovan Colton is racing for potential division win in the Drivers' Championship, Double Edge Motorsport is still competing for a podium spot in the team standings as well. So a win here would be nothing short of a miraculous performance for this final round of the season. But that remains to be seen. Still has Regale Vita at bay behind. And it really has been a mega drive so far. You can see more and more drivers coming into the pits. That blue flag traffic hasn't really become a problem. I suppose that does make sense uh, with them having uh, fresh retirees. That's another wide moment, though, through cops from Donovan Colton. As I mentioned before, it's very, very easy to get track warnings here if you're not careful going wide in spots like that. But it looks like there's no drive through on the table just yet. And you know for a fact that would be the most devastating outcome that could possibly happen realistically for anybody who's in the championship. Colton once again goes wide. And Regale Vita might have a bit of a run, but maybe a little bit too far back to do anything about it. Andrew, I'm going to be sending you a feed here for the picture in picture in the next minute or so. So just a heads up, I will get that over to you. Sure thing. Regale Vita looking up the inside. The heavy braking zone once again. McLaren on Aston Martin, but the move is not there. Later on the brakes was Donovan Golden, and he holds on to the lead, at least for now. Austin Red still staying distant related to this fight, 1.2 seconds behind. Further down the field, Tyler Thompson. A closing gap here to Thomas Ma in front. Zip up behind Mike Cowley, who's been involved in many a moment of action so far today. I'll leave the cam up here on our race leaders. As I try to pull up that PIP. See if we can't get that sorted out for us. Again in the straights. There's nothing can be done, it feels like. For Regale Vita behind, and it looks like we are in business. The PIP is up, lads. <laughs> At long last, we've got a secondary view. I mean, I'm impressed with myself. Do that live during stream. So we got a first pitter, right? Was that Colton in the pit? I think I just saw someone go in the pit. Indeed it was. 31 minutes and 40 seconds into the race. Potential undercut, too. We'll have to wait yeah, and see. For, for those new here, that means you're going in earlier, right? Before your competitors. You're first to go in. An overcut would mean you're waiting in, to the end of the race. Uh, so that would be an over, overcut. So Donovan Colton trying the undercut. Uh, Regale VTA and Austin Red trying the uh, overcut. I almost wonder if it's a bit bold to say it's an overcut. Considering that yeah. this, this really True. hits to the crossover point where you... It you is. want the new tires, right? Because, sure. uh, you know, at, at the very, very halfway point, you know, once you're... Something, something about once you once you walk halfway into a forest, you can't walk in anymore. You can only walk out, and that's where the tires are pretty much at. You can't really... You can't get better grip out of those worn tires than the new ones at that point. Tyler Thompson trying to find his move 
on Thomas Ma. But there's not really an opportunity up the outside. Zip in towards Stowe against Mike Cali. He's going to be later on the brakes. It's Ferrari and Ferrari. Bit of contact. And oh no, Zip! A bit of a loss of control. He keeps the car pointing in the right direction. But that looks like it was going to be a solid move. And now they might even lose another position into the following braking zone. And it's going to be two loss for Zip. It's mighty unfortunate. Picture in picture is on your championship leader, Austin Red. We'll stay on that. Uh, see when he maybe dives in. Oh. So drivers to watch. Red uh, currently out on track. Colton has made his stop. Rene Oki's got a stop to go of 30. Can only imagine it's for speeding in the pit lane. And that's going to be a devastating hit for the race. But at the end of the season here, at the end of all things, Rene Oki not really racing for a championship spot. So I don't think that they're I mean, going to be... Too, too disappointed. Sure, sure, it sucks, but, you know. Renayoki, highlight of the season was his win at Indianapolis. Uh, had a great race. Red now into the pits. So I will move in picture and picture over to Donovan Colton. Donovan Colton, who had a seemingly optimal lap time, 32 seconds. Actually, wait a minute. JP May had a stop of 19 seconds? I'm not sure if that's some sort of a, a glitch on my race control. That doesn't seem possible, especially if you're taking tires. Uh, but Austin Red, Thomas Ma, Roger Rodriguez, and Mike Cowley all into the pits now, too. So quite a few cars exiting the racing surface. This is James Spiker and Tyler Thompson who are being promoted into uh, third and second, respectively. But it looks like Raf Cab's got something to say about that into the braking zone towards Stowe. And I think, oh, Spike is going to take some contact on the inside. Raf Cab's able to save a little bit of a slide as a result. Well, that's some more door banging out of Stowe that results in a lost position for the car on the outside. And the stewards might have a bit to say about that one. It might have been a racing incident, though. You know, trying to take space. Both at the same time, that can tend to happen a little bit. And Raf Cab and James Becker once again getting very, very close to each other there. So time in pits, Donovan Colton one minute total. Uh, and then Austin Red, 59 seconds. So a slight advantage to Austin Red. Uh, so, but he's still lined up behind him. Picture in picture, you can kind of just barely make him out. This is Donovan Colton on screen, but there is a gap to Austin Red, I'll get that. Uh, that is 4.6 seconds. See this right on pit exit. Mike Cowley and Steven Music going at it a little bit here. That's four position. Or, excuse me, is it four position? Mike Cowley, who has, yeah, has already made their stop. It's just, it just hadn't updated on the left-hand side of the screen. So that is 4P15. Steven Music ahead of Mike Cowley. See That's not only a fight for, for position on track. That's also a fight for second in silvers right mm. cowley music and schaefer all battling for second in that silver championship thompson and spiker both pulling into the pit lane now and how seems... cute teammates they yeah. do this all season you, you know what sometimes it, it, it just it just works you know a whole it does. It. It, they've killed it this season they've absolutely killed it or uh here's one to watch now it's it's been closed. Donovan Colton went for the undercut, as you mentioned, and now with Vitya on the pits, and Austin Red still quite behind this. You mentioned this a little bit earlier, in terms of pit strategy. He's five and a half seconds behind Donovan Colton, who just got past uh, JP May, uh, with a relatively leisurely uh, leisurely move. I think that was because May realized it's not for position. So now Vitya is coming out of the pit lane, but I think Donovan Colton has got this one relatively comfortably. In fact. He moves way up the order in relation to VTA, who just now exited the pit lane. And this is a massive red. advantage. For you know, Red's gotten around VTA then. So now it's on. It's Colton versus Red. Colton's got the fastest Colton... lap. <laughs> oh, no. Does he really? He does. Okay, so hold on. So now that Red's moved up the provisionally into second place, let me do some math here. But wait, wait, hang on. So Colton's got the fastest lap now, but has one or two laps older tires, maybe even three, than Miguel Vitia and Austin Red. If one of them pulls the fastest lap away from Donovan Colton and Red finishes in second place, I mean... It's even, Red, yeah. 
I mean, they got fresh tires on, right? So the fastest laps are going to be set in this stint of the race because they got a less fuel load and they have new tires. Mm. So expect that f fastest lap to probably be broken once more. Can Colton hang on to it, though? That fastest lap of the race is, what, two minutes almost flat, dead. Two minutes, zero, four, five. So uh, Red, his fastest lap, he's, oh, he doesn't have a shot. He's six-tenths shy. Well, he's six tenths shy, but he only just now came out of the pits. Recently. He only just came out of the pits. Okay, good point. So, so. he's he's got good. those reasonably fresh tires, and here's where it's immediately up onto the back of Austin Red. Oh my goodness, where did this come from? I only saw this gap come down just recently. There's only a couple of gaps that are even within a second, uh, which I get notifications. For, well, not notifications, but they're alternatively colored on the race control, so I can see them easier. But this one caught me completely by surprise. I wonder if Red made a mistake of some variety. They're still only about five or six seconds behind Donovan Golden, which is pretty much where we left them. But now, Raquel, that's interesting. Andrew, this is interesting, because Red can't let Vitier get in front of him, because then they would be tied on points. Then it goes to tiebreaker. So Red actually does need to stay in front. And so long as Colton has the fastest lap, Red can't get past here. This is Red's battle for the season, for the title, for everything. Right now. I got to go look up the tiebreaker. I don't even know where to find that. <laughs> I, I really don't know either. We're going to have to get somebody. I, I don't know if one of the admins is watching the stream right now, but please pick us in the broadcast office chat and let us know what would happen in, in this event because it's not necessarily unlikely that we have ourselves this exact situation. Austin Red, who has to defend now from Regeli Vitia, who looks very solid in terms of base, does not have the fastest lap. David Golden is holding on to it right now, and the McLaren has to go on the outside here of the Lamborghini towards Stowe. And this is a huge holdup, though, for, for, the, for the freshest tires as well. Both Austin Red and Regal have to be fighting right now. They can't focus on setting the fastest lap time, trying to get that purple lap away from Donovan Colton, and that's the one point that could easier go his way the more laps they spend on their new tires just fighting. Get out of here. Yeah, you cannot script this. This is ridiculous. So Donovan Colton, okay, Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Donovan close. Colton has the fastest lap, provisionally, will be winning this race once Raf Cab, Zip, and Mert Mertzen do make their pit stops. So Colton, with the fastest lap and a race win, would have 611 points. Austin Red, 611 points. We are working on tiebreaker here for you folks. That's JP May in front, who again is not a part of this battle, so has yet to make their pit stop. And now Austin Red is coming up behind that Bentley. Oh, Regeli Vita, very late on the brakes there. Incredible confidence in the Lamborghini. He's run a little bit wide now. And Regeli, he's been at this spot before, trying to go wide through left field and get the better exit in towards Cops Corner. The Lamborghini is kind of parking on the apex, though. Austin Red can't wash wide because he knows the McLaren is there, and they're looking to go side by side through Cops. Austin Red cannot let Vita through, but he does. Vita gets in front of Austin Red here with 22 minutes to go. Can they hold on to this lead? Oh my goodness. Oh no. And Vitae's gonna get past JP May. JP May is certainly not going to let. Oh my goodness, almost contact there. JP May in the Bentley does let Vitae through, but it was a bit narrow. And Austin Red's gonna be stuck up behind him now through Maggots and Beckett. And if you take the wing cam here, that's a massive gap now developed between Vitae and our car that's not even a part of this battle. Oh, and Red stuck behind JP May. I cannot believe it. Has no obligation to remove themselves from this battle between these two cars. But you can see he's causing some very obvious problems. He's still defending from Austin Red even. Is somebody paying this driver to, to interfere in the championship? <laughs> Red gets around, but that's so much time lost. A two second gap now to the car in front. I can scarcely believe that. At least we got something going on here in the back to take my mind off. This is Cowley against Eric Rudder, who's been overtaken by many a driver so far today. It's going to try to stick it up the inside. Exit of Stowe onto that little straight before the breaking zone into the chicane. And it's a nice fight here from the 296. Mike Cowley has been looking on form so far today. And it looks like they're going to get a little bit of argy bargy, but the Ferrari's got the position. Well, oh, I got to find goodness. these high-breaking rules. So I, I, what I, I think it may be race wins, right? So finishing order, Colton has 
uh, a race win. Uh, Austin Red does not. Austin Red does have four podiums this season. Highest finish is second, three thirds. But Donovan Colton does have race wins. This is insanity. And Aaron Kovach here up behind Nathan Schaefer, who's sitting in 18th right now. Rodericks has taken a drive through penalty. That's the uh, P17 Nissan GTR. So not exactly in contention. But here's what I want you to think about the gap from Austin Red to Regalia Vita. 2.8, almost three seconds. Now they're essentially just hot lapping against each other. We know who was the faster on pace in qualifying, and indeed it is Regalia Vita who was the purple lap of the race. On their last lap, came across the line with a 159.402 versus Donovan Colton with a 159.472. But Colton has a 7.3 second gap to the car behind right now. Wow. This will come down to rules, and there's no way they know it. There's no way they know it. Well, let's not be too hasty. Things could still very much change. As we know, in Division 5, anything could happen. One slight misstep from the leader could cause some major problems. Maybe a drive through penalty. Maybe a, uh, a wipeout on their own terms. We never really do know. But for now... Donovan Colton, all he really has to do, he, he can even take a more leisurely pace. There is not, there are 19 minutes left to go, but at this stage, I'm not necessarily overtly worried. Oh, that's a huge squeeze from the 200 of JP Main. There was no space on the inside for Thomas Maul. They tried it anyway. Both cars somehow get through. That was an aggressive move from Thomas Maul. I think the 200 was in the right there. And the Audi decided to go up the in try to move up the inside anyway, and they both ended up running it a little bit wide. Nathan Schaefer had an invalid lap here. That's still a drive through for Rodericks, who's immediately ahead of them, so they're trying to move up. But, oh my goodness. I, I don't know about that. I mean, it's hard racing, that's for sure. Okay, so according to Doug Mitchell, one of our admins, uh, we believe it's wins, higher averaging finishing position, and then there's other down the line so if it is indeed wins colton would win the championship because at a tie he has a race win austin red does not oh my goodness Ooh. oh my lost the rear end of the audi there through the middle of cops and into the barrier jp may got away with that little bit of rear contact this is this seems like it's been the story of this season though for ma and that's an unfortunate uh, that's an unfortunate incident, but getting back to what you were saying, Andrew, indeed, Colton, sitting really pretty right now. Had an invalid lap this lap. Still has no drive through on the table, but you can see, I, I, I can't help but wonder if the stress is starting to get to this guy a little bit. Of course, this is all provision. Any tickets, anything filed, but I mean, we haven't seen anything of the sort. Everything's been very, very clean from those two championship drivers, Colton and Red. Uh, but I do believe with what Colton's done so far this season and certainly what he's done today. He will be the championship. And we've still got some time to go here. Yeah, I, I really don't, don't want to like, call it too early. I really don't like you using those words. But uh, save for any sort of spectacular incident going on, you are correct. It looks like the gap between Colton and the next blue flag traffic right now is about 20 uh, or not, not even... How, how, how many seconds is it? It's, yeah, it's 26 seconds. So they don't have to worry about that just yet. I see a little bit of action further down the field. JP May getting overtaken. He's one of the last drivers who has to pit. And Roger's got to stop going 30. I think was trying to serve their drive-through penalty and maybe sped in the pit lane. So it goes from bad to worse uh, for them. Raf Cab, he's looking to get a bit of a move done here on the forearm in front of James Spiker. Looks like the gap is a little bit too large to try to send it through that breaking zone. So he'll wait on behind. Mike Cowley, though, might have an opportunity through the middle straight. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it. So we're just going to have to count on what uh, we've been told. Uh, race wins, we do believe, would be the tiebreaker. So at present, with Donovan Colton, if he finishes first, just, just for clarity's sake, if he finishes first with no fastest lap, but Austin Red finishes in third, then Donovan Colton wins the championship. That is correct. But if Austin Red takes third and the fastest lap. Correct. 
Austin Red, Austin Red. would win the championship. So, he's got 50, He's got 16 minutes here to set the fastest lap of the race. He wins. If he drops oh, any further position down the order, it's automatically over. Right. So Red, his only real shot, if he can't chase down Colton, which it doesn't look like he can, uh, he's got to get the fastest lap. Heck. Okay, yeah, and I was thinking, like, do a Max Verstappen pin in the last <laughs> race, but he dropped position, so it wouldn't help. Yeah. I mean, that would, that would certainly be a legendary move should yeah. they have been able to pull it off, but I, I, I uh, don't see that happening. way too hard there. <laughs> yeah. Taking it way too hard. Oh, you got something here. This is uh, Music and Buckley. Dude, it is. Music is going to try to force the issue through the apex here. And, oh, maybe a little bit of a door bang. You can see Buckley kind of losing a little bit. And now, oh, no, that's a big contact in Music. Oh, God. It gets through that, but Stefan Buckley in the back took a massive front on the impact into the barrier. I can guarantee you if this was not a sim race, their race is over. My God. Buckley. I don't even know if it's worth getting back onto the track. You've almost certainly got steering rack damage. There's no way you are returning to this race. I, I think that's just the end. That was, I think, Mike Cowley, was it? Alongside that was Cowley. Steven Music. It was Cowley. Yeah. Cowley just kind of just chopped him off there and sent Buckley right into the sand. Well, that's huge, because if Cowley, if Cowley gets a penalty for that, I don't necessarily know who was at fault for that incident just at a glance. But if Cowley takes the fall, then that could have massive implications for their championship because they're following music right now. That's a huge wide moment there for yeah. Eric Rutter, I might add. But So as it stands right now, Spiker obviously wins silver, uh, but huh. music wins, gets second. Cowley, I think, is going to get a penalty for that. Uh, th that's going to drop him down. So he needs to finish in front of music, but right now music is in front of him anyway. So music's going to get second in this silver championship as they stand right now. It, but that did not look good. That looked like a penalty on Cowley. It looked like a good move for Steven Music, I'll grant. And I have to say, I don't necessarily dislike the idea there from Cowley, but the execution, I mean, it was pretty obvious that, you know, you're coming across the track, and I think that was a little bit of a... That, that's a Steven... Uh, that's Rodericks and Rene Oki kind of doing a little bit of a side-by-side uh, -side there, uh, some sort of uh, showmanship, I think, but... I mean, like I was saying, for Cali, I don't dislike the idea of following through a car on the advantage that they created, but it's very obvious that you carried a lot of speed and you kind of came across the track and maybe didn't leave space for that car on the outside. So we'll leave that one, like I said, to the stewards. But as you said, and I, I have to agree, I think that might be a big penalty coming the way of the 296. Picture in picture is on your race leader and we believe your championship leader, Donovan Colton. Uh, there's a 12-second gap till you get to Austin Red, currently in third. Uh, Austin does lead this championship coming into tonight. Uh, so it doesn't look like Austin Red's going to be able to catch Colton. But can Red set the fastest lap of the race? Can he get that track racer fastest lap of the race? It would be the most important point in D5 championship history. More, most likely. And at this point, you surely don't want to be relying on luck of the draw as, oh my goodness, Rodericks and Aoki going rather slow there. And you can see that kind of broke up the fight a little bit. Mike Cowley, I think, got distracted by the two uh, Nissan GTRs and went well deep there, even though it looked like they had the move just about done on Steven Music. I don't know what's going on here. Rodericks and Aoki, who appear to be driving reasonably slowly around the track, uh, apparently on the straight. I mean, maybe you were letting them through for blue flags. They certainly would have been getting blue flags. They were taking up more space on the straight. I, I don't know what exactly happened there, but that might be put up to a little bit of investigation on its own right. I, I'm a bit un, unsure of that, but you talk about the gap between Colton and Austin Red, but right now Red is only necessarily concerned about the gap between Vitea and Colton, which sits at 3.3 seconds, roughly. If Colton makes a couple of minor errors and Frankly, Vitya, who has been faster on the last lap by almost a full second than Colton Whoa. in front. Miguel Vitya just got the fastest lap. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> He's insanely pacey right now. Well, that takes a point away from Colton. It does. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Miguel Vitya could win this championship for Austin Red. Now the, now the coin flips upside down. Now it's Colton who needs to get the fastest lap. Well, this, this is a tough spot, too, because I wonder if Colton 
in a, in, a, in a strange twist, we've never really, I, I don't think, seen this before, but I wonder if Golden is going to sacrifice a little bit of lap time on a previous lap to maybe let the tires cool down a you little should. bit. It, the, Absolutely, right? Or take that last turn, right? That that uh, Luffield, Luffield and Woodcott come out wide and get a good run. Again, he can't know this unless someone's tapping on his shoulder. He's got radio. We don't have that. You're on your own. Maybe Jim's in his ear and he's got like, you know, real good data for him, but I doubt it. Unbelievable. Regella Vite just takes the track racer fastest lap of the race. Why is that a big deal? It takes a point away from Colton. Red now leads the championship by a single point. The fastest lap gets you a point. I'm keeping my eye on the Delta right now. Donovan Colton is about a tenth down on his best time, and his best time needs to improve by two and a half tenths if he wants to take the fastest lap back from Regali Vitea. I just don't see that happening right now. So at this point in time, I, I mean, the, the Delta's even going green for Regali Vitea. I'm seeing on my race control. And as Donovan Colton goes wide here, I, I don't know what else there is to say. Regele is on the charge. He's only two seconds behind Donovan Gold right now. So talk about the fast lap all you want, but right now it's about position and Regele wants this win. Unbelievable here. Unbelievable. I mentioned before, last lap, it was Donovan Colton who was about almost a second slower. It was nine tenths. Donovan Colton was slower than Regele Vitea. After they crossed the line again, Donovan Colton was again nine tenths slower than Regele Vitea. And you can see he's already coming up. This gap has diminished from three seconds all the way down to one and a half. You can see the Aston Martin coming down the middle straight here for the 154 representing Sky Tempesta. Regele Vitea is really about to win this championship for Austin Red if he can get into this fight and overtake Donovan Colton. Where's this pace coming from? Really, really late. I think he thinks he's got a shot at winning Whoa. this race. I, th I thought Colton just went a little bit light. Maybe, maybe he's trying to get that run that you were talking about. But then you have the McLaren coming up behind you. Oh, my goodness. Colton has to win, right? He has to win and get the fastest lap. Yes. Unless Austin Red... If Austin Red has a bit of a moment, if he runs into maybe a back marker, Donovan Colton has gone wide at Cops Corner. Please do not show me a red and white box on the left-hand side of the screen. There is none. But this is an invalid lap. You can't set the fastest lap on an invalid lap. So Colton is going to have to take one more tour around Silverstone before even getting another chance. But again, his tires are older than Regele's. And Regele just set a 159.2, an absolute screamer. More, almost a second faster again. Colton's in trouble. I think Colton's in trouble. He's going to have trouble holding on to this race. As fast as Regele Vitti is driving right now, he was... One, one and a half seconds faster than Donovan Colton the last lap around. Colton was a two minute seven. Regale Vitae, a 159 two. And for this driver right here, all you gotta do is just bring it home right now. You are winning the championship as it presently stands and almost surely Regale is either going to get past Colton or they're both going to go down when he tries to do so. And there'll be no more chance for Colton to take the fastest lap. And even, even if Regele can't take Colton out of the lead, if that battle ends up ensuing, as we most surely think it is going to, as Colton goes a little bit wide there in the middle sector, there's no chance if you are in, in, enveloped in a battle, you cannot go for a fastest lap because you're too busy defending from the car behind. This is on. This is on. Regele Vitae wants a win. He does not care about what's happening around him. Just to reset here, right? Donovan Colton is in second in this championship. Austin Red does lead this championship coming into tonight to win as they are right now. Colton in first and Red in third. Colton has to win this race. He has to win and he has to have the fastest lap of the race. He's only got half of that job done right so far. It's Regela Vitier with the fastest lap of the race and much faster, much faster. Colton's not getting faster. He's only getting slower. He's, this is problems for Donovan Colton. He's just gone wide of cops again. You, you can't improve on a lap that you invalidate like that, and you've immediately got opposition on your tail. So Colton, a little bit slow here through Beckett's, and you can see Regele wants it in second place right now, but it doesn't seem like it's for long. It feels like the tire life never, ever started to decay here for the McLaren behind Donovan Colton. And right now, Austin, all you got to do is keep it clean.
and just hope that Colton cannot pull together some sort of a miracle right about now. It certainly is possible, but it looks almost entirely improbable given the pace that we've seen so far. There's only going to be a couple of more opportunities for clean laps here for Donovan Colton, and the pressure from Miguel behind is immense. If Colton doesn't know that he has to take the fastest lap right now, this is the most pressure you can be under. And VTL up the inside, a huge move as VTL goes down towards Abby. There's no way the Aston can stay in this one. Donovan Colton knows that most of your season relies on getting past this car now in front of you, who has had so, so much more pace in both both qualifying and now here. Regala Vite on the verge of something special, looking for back-to-back -back race wins here. One last week at Red Bull, and he just pulled off on a fantastic move. I'm going to go ahead and call it the Retro Saga move of the day. Regala Vite getting the race pass for the, for the lead here against Donovan Colton. Now, again, reset. Austin Red will be leading this championship as they stand right now. Austin Red in third. No shot at winning this race. Four minutes to go. Five minutes to go, excuse me. A little bit more action happening down the field. James Spiker and Tyler Thompson are having a bit of a bout of it. They're both in fourth and fifth right now. For Spiker, this is looking like the, the silver championship win as he makes the overtake on his teammate and the team championship victory for Corsa Spasatoro, which is a huge story for them. But we haven't had a whole lot of time to talk about it, given the stakes right now. Steven Music losing out of position to Mike Cowley further down the field. Uh, Rodericks and Aoki still side by side by the look of it in through the middle sector. And they caused a little bit of havoc earlier on, but it seems like things have started to die down. Raf Cab is also a part of this conversation, but Colton continues to lose the tail of the car in front. That's for Kelly Vitia, who is riding off into the distance here at Silverstone. The only thing that could ruin this championship for Austin Red is a mistake on his own part. And I really don't, I do not think that's going to happen. As soon as Red sees that Donovan Colton has moved down to second on his relative, he is taking it easy. You have nothing to lose by pushing right now. You've got a 12 second gap behind and a really an 11 second gap in front. You're, you are living the life of Riley right now if you're Austin Red. If you have a race engineer, if you have anybody who's helping you out in your ear right now, they are telling you, you have won. Just take it easy on the way in. <laughs> yeah, very easy. Raf Cab looking to make a very. This is impressive from Raf Cab. I don't think we've ever seen him close to this. <laughs> oh, that's not looking pretty there. Contact with Tyler Thompson. We got glued together there. A little bit of d fiving for the end of the season. <laughs> At least it was a severe incident. Tell you that for free. <laughs> Stefan was great. There was breaks in Hall. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they sure gave it their best effort. Oh, VTI just got a, an invalid lap. Keep your eye on the left side of your screen. Oh, my goodness. If VTI gets a drive through penalty. I don't think Donovan Colton's yeah. going to get the fastest lap anytime soon. No, but again, so VTI could actually lose this race. He could finish dead last. It doesn't matter. But He's even got if, the fastest lap. Even if VTI Colton gets it. Colton has to win and get the fastest lap. It's the only shot he's got with red and third. Mike Cowley, nice move around JP May, who still has yet to take their pit stop. The pit window is going to be closing very, very soon. It's two and a half minutes of what are fundamentally victory laps at this point for Austin Red. Donovan Golden has long lost Regalia Vitae, who's coming through uh, Maggots and Beckett's right now, three seconds ahead of the Aston that he seemingly overtook as if standing still earlier on in the race. And it has been nothing short of a miracle drive for Regal Vitia, who lost the lead to Donovan Colton, but on the second stint, came back in full force. I see somebody off in the back. That's Rodericks off on the side of the road in the Nissan GTR. Had a bit of a mare of a race. You can see JP May is in the pit. Steven Music is going to gain a position as a result and most likely going to be moving past Mike Cowley, even though they're behind them on track right now. Although we have to await the stewards' decision on that. Regal Vitia coming with a minute and 40 left. It looks like Next, this lap might be the white flag or the next, but for Austin Red, this is just huge. It wasn't the drive you were probably hoping for at the end of the day, but it's a drive that earns you the championship win so long as you keep it between the lines from here on to the end of the race. And as we mentioned before, at this point, all it is is just taking a couple of last tours in the closing moments of season 10 as you bask in your victory. I mean, it's a little bittersweet for Austin Red. He's never won a race in SRA. <laughs> Four career podiums. 
one career pole position. He's driven over 2,120 laps. That's 6,146 miles. He's yet to get that race win, but I don't think he cares. He's going to get a D5 championship. 45 seconds to go. Gilly, coming up to the line now. Right, man. And that is going down. to be the white Keep flag fighting. shown for Regele Vitea driving the 154 McLaren for Sky Tempesta Racing on a victory lap of their own. A three and a half second gap to Donovan Golden behind who has one last opportunity to get that fastest lap and just hope and pray that somehow they get past Regele Vitea. Eric Roder just lost position to Mert Mertz and we saw a car off on the side of the road only a moment ago. Raf Cab is going to have a bit of a run here on James Spiker, but it looks like nothing is really going to come of it. But I mean, talking about the season as a whole, it has been a wild ride. We've seen so many incidents involving the top three drivers. And imagine if Colton didn't befall such poor luck in the last couple of races, you know. Yeah, you know what? Winning. That's what it was. This would be a That's victory right. for you. It, that championship, his performance at Red Bull Ring, that really, really hurt. That turned into his drop round. Um, he was on pole and got served a drive through, right? Um, he's, Maybe you're going to look back and, and, and if he's going to say, you know what, that's when it turned, that's when the tables turned. But Regela Vitae, are we going to get uh, just a few more corners to go? Uh, we haven't had a repeat race winner. We've had seven different race winners here in Division 5. And Regela Vitae is going to be our race winner here at Silverstone. <laughs> Roderick Sue. Okay. Austin Red came, in, came up on Roderick's there. And it almost looked like things might have got a little bit hairy there with the 133, but Austin Red stays on the track. Regale Vitea has the fastest lap of 159.212. Coming across one of the final corners on the racetrack. And now down the start finish straight as Regale Vitea <laughs> back starts, to back. starts doing his little victory wiggle. He takes the checkered flag here for Sky Tempesta Racing. Back to back victories. Donovan Colton comes across the line in second, and it's no fastest lap. So Austin Red coming down the main straight. Your Division 5 champion overall for T Rex. It's the 728. No race wins, but the consistent finishes do it all the way home for Austin Red. What a finish, what a story for this driver off on the side and probably going to engage in a little bit of bakery. Donovan Colton's going for it as well. There's a little bit of good sportsmanship. James Spiker comes across the line. Tyler Thompson immediately behind, which secures both his silver championship and the team championship for Corsa Spazzatura for OBDA. So many stories of victory here in Austin Red and Donovan Colton. That's beautiful. Look at that. Look That's that sportsmanship right there. Right there. Look at that little shot right there. What a season we had between these two. I would love to see Josh Grush in here. He was a player in this championship and couldn't make it. Uh, but Austin Red from Longview, Texas, your D5 champion. How about that? Five podiums in eight races. Never got that win. That didn't matter. Look at him. I think he knows now. Austin Red, T-Rex Motorsports. Unbelievable. Lots of tire marks out there on the track. And you, uh, let, just think back to that. Like, did Regal Vitae know what he was doing? There's no way. no way. Did Donovan Colton know what was happening between them with the fastest lap of the race? Unbelievable. What drama. I, I'm not sure. We saw Donovan Colton doing some donuts there. I'm not sure if Donovan Colton even knows that he lost the championship. I think he does. But, oh, my God. Imagine. But, but still talk about Regal. You know, even if he knew what he was getting into, that he's interfering with the championship, do you care? That man no. is a no. racing driver. That is the only thing that we can really say about him for sure. He is a racing driver because he is going for it at all times. He does not care if he's not in the championship. He sent it all the way through, and what a performance. That second stint, I would argue that that second stint from Regal Vitea was the best stint that we saw all season. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Absolutely flying. Low 59s, a 59.2 ended up being the uh, fastest lap of the race. That's incredible pace. Regala Vitae, 
where did this come from? He had finishes of 14th, 10th, 27th at Paul Ricard, 19th at Valencia, 18th in spot, and then bam, turned it on. Race win at Red Bull Ring, race win here at uh, Silverstone. Montreal Canadian, unbelievable, playing on a controller. Just ludicrous wow. stuff. But hey, some, sometimes miracles, miracles really do happen. And they pulled it off. But so many, so many good stories here. That uh, reminds me, of course, Division 4 last season, it was not the team that had many, many first place finishes or even many, many podiums, although I believe that they did end up with more than a couple of podiums. It was uh, Comic Racing, and this time it was Corsa Spazzatura. They could have had a race win between them, sure, um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't the podiums or the race wins that propelled them to the team victory. It was their consistent performance. The same goes for the silver championship winner, and that was the same goes for the gold championship winner. And the overall for Austin Red. So it just goes to show, if you have the, the, uh, the choice of winning the occasional race or being consistent with your finishes, I think I'd probably have to take the latter. Although winning races is, is a pretty good feeling too. I mean, I'll say that for free. It does. It certainly, it feels very, very special, right? Uh, but Austin Red, to, to, to give you guys a sense of where we finished in the championship, Austin Red, 601 championship points. Donovan Colton, 590. He did come up just a little bit short. There was an opportunity here today. Donovan Colton did as much as he possibly could, right? Started the race on front row, led most of this race, and even had the fastest lap. Uh, it didn't work out for him today, but you got to believe he's a rookie. That's a rookie. Yeah. And, I mean, with two P2 finishes. Sign him up. Sign him up. Let me tell you, he's going to be a hot commodity. Both of them, Red and Colton. I mean, Colton with two P2 finishes and a race win. Red with four times, as you mentioned, on the podium in third and coming in second at the Red Bull ring. I mean, and being just outside of the top three at Kyalami. It's pretty. It's pretty obvious why he's standing on the top step of the podium af after that race. At the end of all things, but the biggest one for me, Regeli Vitia, I think very, very clearly demonstrated that either he was not very experienced with GT3 cars before the season started, or he just tried to. He just started to take it a little bit more seriously near the end of the season. Because Kyalami, 48 points. You know, 60 at Standard, not bad. 21 at Paul Ricard. Eh. Valencia 37, 39 at Spa. Not really amazing, but two back-to-back -back race wins, and I think it was a P4 at Indianapolis. I mean, very, very obviously a fast driver, you know? Yeah, and, and you know... Willing um, to fight, too. I, I, honestly, he was probably going to be a D5, D5 driver next season. Well, not anymore. Uh, his resume just improved greatly. Um, expect him to move up uh, amongst a, a few other drivers here, but they also secured second in the team championship with those with those two um, uh, performances and those two race wins la in the last two weeks. They did end up getting past Double Edge Motorsports for second in team championships. So of course, the Spazzatura wins. Monaco Gamblers with Regala Vitae get second and Double Edge Motorsports with Donovan Colton and Rutterham, 833. Yeah, I'm making sure that we got uh, everybody on deck. I think we're going to bring in Austin Red first and get their thoughts on a fantastic season, I think it must be said, and the overall win. So without further ado, it's going to be race, well, not race winner, but certainly uh, the most winningest racer of the season. It's Austin Red. Congratulations, my friend. The overall champion after all of the season, you know, so, so many things happened, lots of ups, Lots of downs, but you came out on top. Man, I know. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> so did you know what was happening during the middle of the race, right? So I don't know if you heard the stream, but basically there was a point in this race. You were in third, and Donovan Colton was in first. And he also had the fastest lap of the race. Had they finished that way, you guys would have been tied on points. And get this, Donovan Colton would have won the championship since he has a race win. Did any of this, and I don't know if you were listening to them on the stream, someone tapping in on your shoulder, or you had no clue? 
So this is great uh, because I felt like I was a genius. BTS came up behind me. I knew he was the fastest guy on the track. Colton was leaving me. I'm like, you know what? We'll go. I don't want to fight. You are my only chance at winning this. Go past Colton. And he did it. And I don't even know that I was going no to my race. I was just looking at the freaking racetrack we... the whole race, watching him catch up. We saw you lift off. And I, I was in shock. I was in disbelief. Like, no way did, did you just let that happen. Because if you finish in second, it's a guaranteed victory, even if I Colton do. wins yep. the race. So we were just flabbergasted here in the booth to see you let that happen. But... I mean, your plan paid off. It's very obvious that VTI was able to take it, and he had a phenomenal second stint. So i got to congratulate you on that at the very least. Yeah, I knew he was crazy fast. He was definitely faster than me. I didn't want to annoy him being in front of him and break <laughs> sooner than me, you know, fly all the way to the back. So I'm like, you know what? Best butt, let him go. And let's just run our race, stay consistent, stay safe, and we'll see what happens. So it paid off, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Wow, genius move. You called it. It was pretty dramatic. I, I mean, uh, and at one point, I think there was like maybe 10 minutes left to go in that race after everyone made their pits. And Regala Vitae took back that fastest lap. It was clear he had plenty of pace in that second stint. And then Colton just didn't have it. Didn't have it. Put up a great fight, but take a bow, Austin Red. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah. If you have anything else to say right now, you know, we're going to, we're hopefully going to see you on on the Shui stream, my good friend. But if you have any last words here for season 10, go for it. Guys, just want to say thank you all for commentating. Y'all have done a great job. It really adds to the experience. And I uh, really can't thank you guys enough. For everyone at D5, it was great. I can't wait to see you next season. And we'll see what we, we can do next time. Thanks so much for joining us. And once again, congratulations on the win. I'm assuming you're going to be celebrating tonight. So uh, try to take it easy. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Austin Red. Party, party in, in Longview, Texas. Austin Red. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hope he doesn't have work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Or calling out sick. Hey, you know what? Maybe a couple hours late. No, don't don't even call oh, out sick. Man. Just just tell him. Just tell him right out. Guys, I won. It's it's all over. I I got the dub <laughs> at the end. Um but but for more on that, more perspective, you know, obviously it wasn't a one driver story. I want to talk as well to one Donovan Colton. A heartbreaking finish to the season, but a P2 finish nonetheless. And, oh my god, you gave it your best fight, but it didn't quite work out in the end. We saw you kind of kind of getting a little bit sportsmanlike with, uh, with Austin Red there at the end of all things, though. I mean, tell us about the experience all, overall all the season. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, this race actually was awesome. I loved it. I yeah. loved this race. Yeah, I mean, the only the only uh, issue that second stint, I really struggled with the tires. Um, the first one, I I didn't. I I felt pretty good the whole time, but yeah, second one really struggled with the tires. And I was thinking anyway. I'm like, man, that his fastest lap was just way too fast to to be able to to get that. So I figured, eh, it's you know, I'll I'll give it my best shot, but I'm not too bothered. Um, you know, after the that bug at red bull ring you know i kind of went into this race kind of just looking for you know a good time i didn't really really care too much anymore did you know though did you know the scenario of of what was happening during the race yes there yeah. was okay okay yeah i knew if i got fastest lap and i won it and austin got third that it would be tied so i so you did the math because austin didn't yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, 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 yeah i did the math okay. um yeah so i i well, because I, I, I did the math before going in. I was like, if I get pole, fastest lap, and win, then, and he gets third, then I get it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, Vitya was just too way fast. too fast. I mean, I don't know where that pace came from him, but I mean, it, it was, it was kind of crazy. It was fun battling with him. We got to have a really good battle. I mean, the practice race yesterday, too, we were just, glued to each other the entire time so yeah it was a, it was a uh a good time oh yeah believe us you you don't have to tell us about how good of a battle it was we we got a wonderful <laughs> spot uh, but i mean it's a little bit bittersweet you know because obviously if ETI wasn't as fast as he was then it's entirely possible that awesome red just took that p2 finish and i mean you talk about uh, getting the tie and we talked to the admin actually in the background while the race was happening to get the uh, get the potential scenario if you tied yeah. in points you would have taken the win because you've won a race so far this season so 
even if, uh, if you only got pole and then it was a first and third finish uh, for you and Austin, respectively, you would have taken it, or if you got the fastest lap. But VTI, as you yeah. mentioned, was just, he was just grease lightning today. It was insane yeah. on that second stint. And as you mentioned, struggling with your tires uh, certainly probably didn't help. But you had a solid season yeah. all around. You know, two yeah, podiums, a couple of times finishing right outside and a race win at Valencia. It was definitely a good outing for you. And like you mentioned, I really, it, it does suck. Sometimes it's just motor racing, but the Red Bull ring, the Red Bull ring drive through penalty oh, yeah. being administered. Um, it, it, it sucks. Or the red, yeah. red bug ring is what I've been red, calling the it. The red bug ring. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it, sometimes, sometimes bad things happen to uh, deserving drivers. You know, Max Verstappen, of course, I, I, to make a very, very mainstream reference and show how uncultured yeah. I am with the DNF at uh, Australia because of, you know, issues. Sometimes these kinds of things. Uh, do happen unfortunately I, I would say that's the sim racing equivalent of a mechanical failure yeah. but you can hold your yeah. head up you know hold your yeah. head up and, and say i would have won because you realistic you you, you probably would have you probably would have but yeah. it's still I, I, I mean i i felt really yeah it was a, i was bummed at first because i felt so strong at at red bull ring you know i was i was getting some really good averages and and you know i i was very consistent that was absolutely my most consistent you know fastest track of of the season so it it was a little bit painful at first but i got over it pretty quick because i mean it's just it's just sim racing it's a hobby you know I, the whole reason i'm doing this is is to have a good time and you know there's some good people and you know austin's a cool cool guy and you know so you know i it's hard to be too mad at it for too long you know so so Absolutely. yeah i mean it was it was definitely a strong finish i'm glad this race was so much fun because, you know, otherwise I'd maybe be a little bit more bumped. But, yeah, no, nah, it's it's all good, though. Well, well, I mean, yeah, just to think back of it to, to it, Donovan, this is your first season in SRA. To come away with a race win at Valencia, uh, three podiums this season, six top tens. Uh, I think you got a pole position in there as well. I would say that's a tremendous first season and congratulations it's gonna be another party in park city man yeah yeah sure will be yeah thank you very much and thank you to you guys for for your great commentary and and stuff i always like watching back the race and it makes it so my grandma could follow along which is important too so thanks yeah. for that well, it's definitely a shout out to watching. Graham. yep <laughs> yeah huge shout out to grandma yeah well if you have any last words or other shout outs you want to make that would be the time uh no i'm good just thank you guys thanks sra it, it was a great great season and i'm excited for next season yeah we're looking forward to seeing you on track and thank you so much for joining us yep all right so donovan colton p2 in the overall standings and next uh we've, we still got a couple of more to go there's a lot there's going to be quite a few uh tonight that we're talking to next up regale vt i want to get the race win uh who had Phenomenal pace today, and phenomenal pace here at the latter half of the season. So we'll bring him on in. Regale Vitia, congratulations, sir, on the race win. You don't have quite the pomp and circumstance of some of the other drivers who were on track today, but you certainly made an impact in the standings, and you certainly left an impact on us. Yes, it was a fantastic race. The qualifying went uh, went superb. I think I did my fastest lap even in practice throughout the hundreds of laps I did. It went great. The first stint was super hard on the tires. I don't know. Somebody uh, opened the genie bottle and wished my tires to be absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Second, third lap, I was already feeling it. I was like, oh, this is not going to last. I knew the moment Donovan passed me over, I was like, okay, I just have to keep one second in front. I'll let him go. Uh, I'll let him pit first. I need to have maybe two, three over undercut. Uh, What's the word here that I'm looking for? Fresher tires by two, three yes. laps. Even if, I, even if he was in front by 10, 15 seconds, I knew if I could pump 159s, I would catch him and I was over. Uh, I noticed also that in the first stint, the tires were so destroyed that I lowered my pressure of the PSI by 0.5, and that did uh, quite wonders on the second stint. Half, whoa, 0. 0.5? Five ticks on the pressures. Yes, sir. Well, I better jot that down for my race tomorrow. I don't know about you, Andrew, but I'm certainly going to keep keeping it on that. But, I mean, talking about your second stint in particular, we did notice track temperatures were coming down as the race evolved. Do you think that might have had something to do with it? Because you were absolutely flying. And, you know, the, the situation was, for Donovan Golden, if he did take the race win, because he did not score a pole position point, he had to have the fastest lap and the race win 
to win the championship. I'm assuming you probably weren't even thinking about any of that because you weren't really engaged in that um, between the battle of uh, him and Austin Red. But you just blew us out of the water with your pace in the second stint. I mean, how much how much of an improvement was that for you? And were you expecting that much of an improvement in terms of grip? Uh, first of all, with the championship, I had no <laughs> zero <laughs> focus on it. Well, you should the go back and watch this stream then, yeah, because I mean, we'll, you we'll were a massive <laughs> player. You were a massive player in what was I was. I, I'm watching it every, every minute you're talking about it in the stream. I'm, Ten minutes before the um, the race ends, um, <laughs> for me the moment Donovan passed me, my entire focus was just a, I need P1. I don't care what happens, how I I need P1. Um, in terms of the second stint uh, with the track evolution, I think it did me wonders. I noticed that there were a couple of moments when I felt okay, my tires can go off in this in maggots, especially in maggots. If I miss brake. Or I, I can, essentially what I'm trying to say is I can overheat my tires and maggots. And I try to take it slow there, and everything went smoothly after that. Um, and props to Donovan for giving me the space in uh, that tight corner. I did not expect to pass him there. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was insanely good racing between you guys. I honestly wish the battle lasted a little bit longer than it did. But it seemed pretty obvious that you were the faster of the two cars. And at the end of the day, there wasn't really a whole lot that felt like Colton could do about it. We had him in the booth just a moment ago, and he was mentioning that his tires uh, felt like they were the exact opposite story of yours. He felt very strong in the first stint and fairly weak in the second stint. So it was an insanely good drive from you, no matter, that's for sure. Um, but looking forward now towards potentially Season 11, you know, assuming you're going to be racing with us again, I mean, what are you kind of looking forward to? What's, your, what's going to be your goal for Season 11? Um. I definitely need to pump more practice in, especially with the last two races. Uh, I could put I put quite a bit of practice in uh, to make it more consistent on the track. Sure, I can put a, a fastest lap, but I need the consistency there. And the last two races showed that. Yes, I made a couple of mistakes in the first since The tires were absolutely done. Um, but I think for the season 11, if I make everything consistent, no mistakes here and there, um, I think. No jinx, no jinx, but I think I can get uh, the championship. Oh, and that's if you stay in D5. Your resume, we mentioned on stream, has improved drastically with back-to-back -back wins. So uh, I, well, no matter where you end up, you're going to be competitive. And also, congratulations with uh, second place with Monaco's Gamblers in the team championship. So what a finish to your season. Yeah, that was for the race. Uh, they got us in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we're just about, I think, uh, done. Unless you got any more questions, Andrew, uh, I think now's the time where we'll say, you know, uh, say your piece. You know, if you got anything else here for the end of the season, it's been a good finish for you. And uh, yeah, if you got anything else to say, now's the time. Uh, thanks. Thanks, you guys. Um, season went great, especially the commentators. Shout out to you guys. I love uh, listening to the race after the race is done. Um, hopefully, you guys keep going. Hopefully season 11 is as good as season 10, especially, uh, <laughs> can you imagine if this was in real life, the last, oh, man. last race, last couple of laps, that would have been. <laughs> yeah, you guys certainly gave us a, a good finish to the season, so thanks so much for that, and congratulations again. Two Rays wins in a row, and looking forward to seeing more of you next season. Thank you so much. There it is. Regale Vita, race winner for Silverstone, and the Red Bull Ring, solid performances on both accounts unrivaled really unrivaled really today uh, as much as we saw the race between colton and regala vitae it was not close the second half of that race he was by far the best driver out on track that's for sure i mean there, like you say there's really no doubt about it the pace was unreal it's undoubtedly a deserved win and the same could really be said for the red bull ring you know we we're talking about regale pulling off an alternative strategy and pull off an alternative strategy i think is the lightest way i could describe it because he absolutely destroyed it so yeah he was well untouchable the last few weeks yes so well well done we still got more to go though like i said it's going to be a bit of a marathon tonight for the interviews but we got a lot to go through because our silver champion james spiker and we thought you had it con confirmed last week but now certainly phenomenal drive from you today and over the course of the season i mean it's been consistent placements you still ended up on the podium overall i think for the driver standings 
notwithstanding the division. So how do you feel about that? I feel pretty good. It really shows that consistency is key. Um, I, you know, I've I've just tried to consistently finish in the top ten. This worked out very well this season. Um, yeah, I don't think I had I had zero podiums, and still to end up on the driver standing podium feels pretty good too. Yeah, I've had a great season. I mean. Even looking back on it, I, I'm checking your scores. Uh, Silverstone, 85 points, 72 for the Red Bull Ring, 80 for Spa, 85 for Valencia, 72 for Indianapolis, 85 for Snetterton. The only standouts are Kyle Ami yeah. and Paul Ricard, where you ended up being on, on the receiving end of an incident, which you could really tack up to, to you not having control of. So, honestly, if we, if we go back and tally up those races, you could have been in contention for the overall win, even. So talk about consistency. I mean, you had just incredible consistency over the course of the season, as you mentioned. Um, I mean, what was your mindset coming into this last race, though? Obviously, it was more more or less a bit of a victory lap for you, but... Yeah, so I, I honestly, I didn't actually practice more than four laps until this morning. I, I threw in <laughs> about an hour and 15 minutes of practice this morning, and then about an hour of warm-up. Um, and Really, it was just kind of a relaxing race. Well, originally it was supposed to be a relaxing race, but you know how it gets once you, you get going. Um, I'm very competitive, so it's very hard not to keep pushing. And I had a great race with Raf Cab. Uh, we just pushed all the way to the end. Uh, got a little got a little messy at the end, but um, we we apologized. We we shook hands and we're gonna we're gonna go look for next season. Yeah, certainly not the only instance of really good sportsmanship that we saw tonight. Um, but uh, even just kind of touching on the last uh, last little note that you left us there, uh, next season, I mean, you had a phenomenal finish, as did your teammate, who we'll be speaking to uh, with both of you in a second for the team championship. But looking forward to next season, what are your expectations? You were the silver champion last season, if I'm not mistaken, or excuse me, the uh, the Division 7 champion overall last season, if I'm remembering correctly. No, that was Tyler. Was Tyler. That was Tyler. Tyler. That was Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I think, third Third or fourth is where I ended last season. Um, and last season was a lot about learning. Uh, this season was even more about learning. I'm assuming next <laughs> season I can keep my consistency in place and just kind of ramp up that pace a little bit, maybe start fighting for overall uh, driver victory. Right. Overall driver series victory. Yeah, and, and I mean, touching on that note, you know, like I was saying, uh, as I intended to say at the very least, uh, you and Tyler had very, very consistent performance. Tyler even brought home a win this season. You were definitely in contention for a win a couple of times, but couldn't quite pull it off. As you mentioned, trying to finish in the top 10 more or less on a consistent basis, and it worked out. But towards next season, you mentioned trying to get into the running for the overall win. Do you think yeah. that that's something that you can attain? Are you going to be shooting for that specifically? Um, all I can really do is just keep keep pushing for the, for the lap time, get comfortable with whatever car I'm going to be driving. I... Tyler and I definitely aren't going to do the 296 again. We didn't like it very much. Um, <laughs> it just had some quirks we, we didn't quite like. So we're, we're looking to switching the car up for next season. And then, of course, um, we'll go from there, see how, how consistent we can be and, and push for overall victory. Sure. Well, before we kind of let you off the hook, we do want to pull you on your teammate, Tyler Thompson, as well with us, to talk about your team championship as well. You guys absolutely blew it out of the water. And Tyler, we were just, uh, to get you caught up, we were just talking about uh, where your teammate finished in the overall standings, and you finished quite highly as well, with a race win under your belt, and fourth overall, only being outscored by your teammate by a little bit. I, I mean, what are you guys both thinking as far as uh, teammates moving forward? Obviously, James, you just said you're going to try and push as hard as you can for the driver standings, but I mean, with your guys' consistent performance, even if you get moved up a division, I feel like you're going to be strong contenders for the team championship too. Yeah, I think teams was a really just a cherry on top for us for the season. And we showed a lot of really good consistency early on in the season. We we're like, OK, we need to keep this up and keep the team saying and the driver's stuff will work its way out. So, yeah, I definitely would team up with James again. It's been um, really good and good <laughs> feedback with each other on car setup and just strategy. You know, we had a lot of uh, pit first, pit early strategies in the end of the season that worked out well for us. And that was all you know, planned ahead. We saw the, the very telling uh, double pit strategy uh, tonight as well. I'm glad that, that you say you'd be willing to team with uh, James again because it sounded an awful lot like he was planning on it. So <laughs> I, I'm really yeah. happy to hear that. And for OBDA, I mean, this, this is a pretty big win uh, for the conglomerate as well. So I just want to give you guys my personal congratulations. Well done on that front. Um, Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. 
yeah, I, I just uh, I, I don't know what else to, to really say about it. Andrew, do you have any, any other notes right now? I mean, it was a clear runaway for these two guys here, Tyler yeah. Thompson and James Spiker. Uh, 12 top 10s between the two of you guys, and it was just clear domination. Look forward to seeing you race more um, in, in upcoming seasons. And, and James, on a personal level, you got a graduation soon, so congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited for that. Um, it's only... A little, little bit over two months away now. It's, uh, it's going to be great to have some more time away from school as well. Yeah. Well, well, we'll let you get to your studies, too. I'm sure those have been, like, suffering a little bit. <laughs> well, you're going to try sometime, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, before we let you go, I do have one question. While we got you both here, you mentioned that the 296 maybe, maybe wasn't your favorite. You guys thinking of a call that you're potentially eyeing up for next season? Um, I already pulled Tyler's early today. My next... Our vote is going to be 992. I drove oh, it last season. Oh, that's a good I choice. I love it a lot. I love it a lot. I just know how it works very well. Um, I know Tyler's been trying to push me into the Lambo, though, so we'll see what yeah. happens. <laughs> Definitely not the 296, though. That thing gives you Stockholm Syndrome, and yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, guys. And once again, congratulations on the team championship, and we look forward to seeing you on track next season. Thanks. All right. Thanks thank for you, all guys. Your thank you. That was Tyler Thompson and James Spiker, of course, Espositura, your team champions. And coming here to the end of all things, Andrew, of course, we have to give a huge thank you to our SRA sponsors and title sponsors for supporting us here at SRA, as well as support from Documize, a modern business solution for product management. You can go to Documize.com to learn more today. Support from Retro Saga, a North American-based gaming company that provides accessories for your favorite classic systems, including Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, and much more. You can enhance your retro gaming experience today at RetroSaga.ca. And a huge thank you to our affiliates. You were mentioning them a little bit throughout the race there. Track Racer. You can experience redefined gaming with Track Racer's high-quality sim rigs and accessories. You can use code SRATE at checkout to support us. Armentario. A toolbox for ACC that will enhance your chance to win. You can enjoy a fully customizable and enhanced heads-up display to change the way you experience ACC. AT3D Sim Shop. You can upgrade your sim racing experience with premium 3D printed accessories featuring precision crafted magnetic shifters, sleek cable management solutions, versatile stream deck mounts, and immersive dashboard displays. Their innovative designs enhance performance and style. You can elevate every lap with top tier quality and craftsmanship at AT3D.net. And finally, Go Setups, premium esports setups for everyone. You can use our affiliate link on our Discord and take your drive to the next level. All of these people make what we do possible here at sra and we wouldn't have such a good community and certainly not as amazing of a competition as we would without these guys yeah absolutely and, and we we read off the people who thank us every race but it truly is the sponsors and the title sponsors those guys who give a couple bucks each month um to sra to help you know fund these servers that we race on each week help get these streams going so a, a, a they are incredibly important, and if you do uh, are in a position to, to, to give a couple bucks, it's very, very easy. You can sign up through SRA on the Discord, um, and it go really goes a long way. Yeah. So here at the end of the season, once again, Austin Red, your overall winner. Corsa Spazzatura, your team champions, and James Spiker, the Silver Division winner. But it was not, a, uh, it was not an unbalanced fight. Donovan Colton, very, very close effort for P2 in the overall standings. Andrew... I want to get your final thoughts here before we go ahead and close things out. It's been an awesome season. I personally would like to give a shout out to you as well as Selena Boonstra for joining us here on the broadcast. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight. She wasn't feeling well, but was a very important part of our team. And yeah, I just want to give you the floor here one last time before we close it out. Yeah, I mean, our curtain's going to close here tonight. Doesn't mean we're not coming back. Uh, I hope to be back next season uh, for, for more broadcasting. Unsure what division we'll land in, but uh, you know it's been a pleasure watching these guys race. We raced over 800 miles, uh, but the driver at the top, and it came down to the last few laps, those last minutes, and that's what we love so much about sim racing. It was competition to the very end. Austin Red from Longview, Texas, he is your D5 champion. Truly. The heart of motorsport. Competition until the very 
last inch. We want to give a special thank you to the viewers as well, of course. None of this would really make a world of difference if there was nobody watching. So thank you so much for joining us, not only tonight, but for the rest of the season leading up to this point. Division 5 surely gave us a season to remember, but that is it for Season 10. Of course, there are more races happening tomorrow. The remaining divisions that did not compete tonight will be live on the channels. You can join the SRA Discord in order to find the links uh, for those, but the YouTube channel where you are at right now will be live with Division 3 tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find the Twitch stream link in the SRA Discord as well. And like I said, huge thanks to everybody for joining us. Huge shout out to Division 5 for the awesome racing. And baby, that's motorsport. We'll see you next season.